John. I know what I said last week, but no. But this is the last Rage Select podcast. This the you're, you're going to give your three oh one heart attacks. <laughs> How could anybody take anything that comes out of my mouth seriously? I'm not. You'd a, be surprised. I'm not a CEO. I don't wear a suit. This isn't the last Rage Select podcast. This is the last. Don Matrick uh, Memorial Podcast on the This internet. is the birth of a new era the, of Rage Select Podcast. It's the Epic Game Store Memorial Podcast right here on Rage Select. Uh, yeah, I'm Jeff. I'm John. Uh, yeah, and we got, a, we got another brand new bunch of weird, weird, wild stuff this week, John. Uh, Wacky, wild stuff. Yep. Wacky, wild stuff. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Uh, so I don't know about you, but I've been doing jack shit, as always, making intros, making inglorious bastard puppet intros that nobody watches. And eh, uh, people watched it. People watched it. That's true. It's just I feel like I, I, I slaved over a hot editing bay, and then I'm sure that there are people on the internet that are just like, sniper elite. I don't care about that. And, and like, then, you know, people watched your the second video. Was it uh, Papercraft Hitler? Yeah, with Papercraft Hitler and the yeah. outtakes at the end. And Yeah, that's true. That's true. There was a lot going on last week. I hate it whenever I make a good intro, John. It just means I got to... People are just like, ah, a new era of quality. I'm like, no, it was just one. I want to go back to making dick jokes for a little while. Um, so, yeah, I, I haven't been doing... I haven't been doing jack shit. I, I started. I started rewatching My Hero Academia. Right, like okay, that's okay. you know that's where I am with my life. Is Game of Thrones ended? You know, yeah, it was yeah, a whole thing. Yeah. I feel like everybody. I feel like there was less razzmatazz on the internet for the end of Game of Thrones than there was for the episode before the end. Oh of Game yeah, of no, no, no. I agree with you on that. But there were still a lot of people who were like that ending fucking sucked, and there was a lot of people that were like, no, I, I like that ending. Reminded me of the ending of Lost. Yeah, where like I just said I really liked the ending and thought it was okay, and then like five people came on my feed were like, fuck you, that ending sucked, and you're a shit bag of a person for saying you like it. And I'm like, okay, unfriend you, unfriend you, because <laughs> literally there were people like violent like about the ending of Lost, and I and like there. There are a few people that were like that with uh with Game, Game of, of Thrones. Thrones. Yeah, I mean, you know, in all honesty, uh, like any long running TV show where you've been watching it for ten years or whatever, and it gets yeah. to the end, you expect something good to happen, right? So, yeah. um, My Hero Academia is still one hell of a show, John. Yeah, still yeah, one hell yeah, of a show. Yeah. I'm trying to think, I, 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 I don't. I feel like stuff happened, but I don't remember anything. Okay. Uh, honestly, are you sure that you didn't? This wasn't like a Men in Black situation. I, it, maybe, you maybe met, met an alien, had an maybe. adventure. I, mean, I know last week Friday I watched Detective Pikachu, and then on Sunday I watched uh, the Money in the Bank WWE pay per view. Sure, and, uh, and then I feel like n- I didn't do jack shit after that. <laughs> And it's just a blur. Yeah. It's just it's a just, fast forward, holding down a fast forward like I button. I feel like maybe I did something on one of those days, but I can't remember. Like, I went and bought comics on Wednesday. I haven't read any of them yet, though. Yeah. I'm like a month behind on my comics. Like, I keep buying comics, but I haven't been reading them, which is... I feel like whoever it is, I feel like somebody out there has their has their thumb on the fast button. Fast forward button of 2019 yeah. and i need them to i need them to take it off for a little bit yeah, i mean at least yeah. let's go down to play times two you know just just for a little ways but yeah 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 no uh yeah it's weird yeah well fortunately uh even though you and i didn't do jack shit the internet has plenty of things uh for us to talk about no oh, okay so oh, uh, i feel like there was a bunch of movie trailers this week but the ones that really stuck out to me was we, we got a new <sighs> all right what are your feelings about the Terminator franchise, John? <laughs> One is good. Yeah. Two is good. Yeah. Three is mediocre at best. Okay. Four is a little bit worse than that. Yeah. And then Genesis, I've never even watched because it looked like garbage from the beginning. Okay. Uh, I, ne- I, I literally, I, you Sarah can tell Connor me. Sarah Chronicles? Uh, I never watched, but I heard good things. Okay. I, I watched Sarah Connor Chronicles, and I really liked it, and it was a real shame that they just axed it halfway through. Also, I've- weird to note. Sarah Chronicle Chronicles, uh, Sarah Connor. Yes. And uh, Terminator Genesis, Sarah Connor. Right. Both in Game of Thrones. Cersei and Daenerys, yeah. respectively. And that was literally who the battle was between towards the end, apparently. So yep. Yep. it was the battle of the Sarah Connors. Battle of the Sarah Connors. It's just too bad that they didn't have, um, um, what's her face from Firefly in there? Because she was the, oh, yeah, she yeah, was yeah, the Terminator. Glau. Yeah, Summer Glau. And then... Uh, uh, I don't know yeah. a, C- a CGI Arnold Schwarzenegger Summer Glau versus a CGI Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, I think I can get behind that. Yeah. In any case, 
We're not done flogging the dead horse that is the Terminator franchise, nor will we ever be. Yeah, well, um, what I love about it is Terminator 3 went, okay, this is, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna reboot the franchise and go forward with it and kind of do this thing. And then Terminator Salvation happened and like, we're going to ignore 3. 3 never happened. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, and we're gonna we're gonna be in the future now and start a new Terminator. No, because no, Salvation, they I think one through Salvation technically follows its genesis where they reboot, right? Because no. three is the is is John Connor is older now and a new Terminator has gone back. Like they recast him, right? Yeah. And it's about Judgment Day happening, and then Genesis takes place in the McG fucking weird future. Yeah. Like none of it, none of that's about time travel. It's all like. The future, so it's all uh, what the Terminators. The, the, the they make that one guy into a Terminator, and Christian yeah. Bale is John Connor. And yeah, they, but the, the idea was that the while maybe they didn't flat out contradict three, they kind of were like, no, just ignore three, and it, it just ignore that it ever happened. I, um, yeah, but it was very much a we're going to try to start a new Terminator franchise, you know, with the with take place entirely in the future, and then. Genesis came out and was like, fuck that. Ignore all of it. Only one and two. Yeah. And then and then now this one, the new one, Terminator. Dark Fate. Dark Fate says, nah, fuck all that shit. We got James Cameron producing this time. Yep. Go fuck yourself three through Genesis. Linda Hamilton's back. Arnie's back. Uh, yeah, John Connor nowhere to be seen. No no John Connor that we see. It's going to turn there. out Arnold Schwarzenegger's playing John Connor this time. <laughs> Turns out John Connor grows up and he looks like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, yeah, it was just yeah. a weird thing they never talked yeah, about. They it. never talked about. It. Turns out that was the whole basis of the Skynet decided to use his. Went off to college in Austria, picked up the accent while yeah, he was yeah, there. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, just yeah. got into no. working out, lifted <laughs> a lot of weights, metal yeah, endoskeleton. But no John Connor in this trailer at all. Yeah, which I actually think is probably a wise move. And then who is this? Who is this? Who are these new people? I don't know. Uh, the okay, so it's being directed by Tim Miller, who did Deadpool, yeah, and produced by James Cameron, and then it's got is it who's the lady who's like a half a Terminator or something yeah. weird? Um, like, there's something going on. Mackenzie Davis, yeah, she's in what the hell is she from? I recognize her face, but she's in Black Mirror, The Martian, Blade Runner. She's in, okay, she's been yeah. in a whole bunch of shit. So, um. Oh, she was in San Junipero. That's where I recognize her from. So anyway, it looks like there's there's a new Terminator, but it's two Terminators in one. It's like a metal Terminator yeah. with a T one thousand over it that yeah. can like separate and become. Well, so it's it's not two Terminator. It, he replicates himself. Oh, is that what's going on in yeah. there? Okay. So uh, he can. So it's it instead of him just being able to take the form of whatever he wants, which clearly he can do. He also can replicate himself, and I think he just leaves behind a skele- uh, the endoskeleton. Okay, when he replicates himself, which I think is an interesting like because if you go from Terminator to T one thousand, what's the next evolution of that? Yeah, T one hundred two T one thousand. It's this. I also like that the actor who is playing the Terminator, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, played Ghost Rider in Agents of Shield. Oh, did he? Uh, yeah, I like the fact that he just looks like a like a dude. Yeah, like, he just looks like a guy, like a generic guy in a in a plaid shirt. Yeah. Like, no, I love that too. Uh, you know, say what you will about Robert Patrick, but like he he had a death gaze, right? Like this guy just looks like a like. I always wondered what is Skynet thinking, sending back like these the hulking, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger or Robert Patrick. You know, this guy he could go to fucking starbucks and nobody would i mean they would just serve him yeah right yeah so, yeah yeah um but yeah apparently you have a lady who's part terminator and they're protecting some new person and i gotta admit uh uh when in the reveal scene where linda hamilton comes out yeah. and starts firing at the new terminator she's a bamf <laughs> <laughs> yeah like, literally it's just like shoot 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 that's not working rocket launcher yeah all right let's keep going <laughs> Like and it's and her reaction is very much like ah, this again. <laughs> shoot, shoot! Yeah, All right, yeah, she, let's... Re- she reminds me of um, uh, what Jamie Lee Curtis in the new Halloween. Where yeah. it's like, I mean, well, Jamie Lee Curtis in the new Halloween is kind of crazy, but like that, you know, she's just been fighting Terminators her entire life. Like, well, I one of the things that I have always had a lot of respect for is like between Terminator One and Terminator Two. Linda Hamilton got fucking fit, right? Yeah, like no, she was yeah. like a pretty face in Terminator One and Terminator Two. She was like, you know, 
Like, you believe that she could run around and shoot stuff and, you know, punch people and do yeah. all that crazy shit. So, um, I don't know. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of special effects stuff coming in here towards the end. This whole plane scene uh, that makes me a little worried. And part of me also is getting. I, tell me if you if you see this. I'm getting some like Logan vibes off of this. So kind of everybody's old 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 man. Linda Hamilton and old man Sylvester or uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Which I, don't know. I, I wonder if they're going to bring in something that was from one of the novelizations of Terminator uh, that Arnold Schwarzenegger's character. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's th- that's going to be the case for this movie. I'm assuming it is. But in the this novel, um, it stated that the the look of the Terminator was based on a real person uh-huh. that that Skynet had like full uh bio recordings of and like scans of him and he was like the basis of what they based the t-1000 or t-100 on so like and he uh, was like this like the ultimate soldier kind of like badass guy so like we're pulling an aliens versus predator is that what you're telling me where it's just lance henriksen is is all over time and space because he's the guy that made the robots yeah something like that um I don't know. You know, the thing about Genesis, I watched Genesis. It was not great, but I mean, you guys know me, my movie taste. I'm not exactly like a, like a, fucking... I just didn't bother. I mean, I figure I'll probably watch it if it popped up on like Netflix or something. But, yeah. Like I, I have no intentions of going out of my way to watch it. But like, I like the idea. One of the things that I like is that like Terminator one through Genesis, in my opinion, follows a particular story. But the thing is that Terminator has time travel and like the robots are trying to change the future so that opens up a whole realm of possibilities for essentially rebooting this franchise in canon because yeah. there is time travel and you yeah. can I mean I felt like that's kind of what they were doing with Genesis we're trying to do with Genesis Absolutely yeah uh, so I'm hoping that they dip back into that at least a little bit or I don't know maybe not I you know uh who knows like just because James Cameron is working on it doesn't mean it's going to be great Well here's my but... question You've watched the trailer. Uh huh. Obviously, probably more than once since it came out. A couple times. A couple I mean, times. Know, it came out today, so. Based on this trailer alone. Yeah. Would you go see this movie? Uh, I would watch this movie. I, I, I don't I, like going to movie theaters to see it, but I would, I would give it a shot. I mean, it looks like it's yeah. at least capable. Trying something, yeah. you know? I also, I've stated this before, and I will state it a bunch more times, is that I like it when we acknowledge that. Actors are old. Yeah. I like it when we acknowledge that Sarah Connor, that all that shit happened like in 1997 or whatever, 98, yeah. right? And that we are now in 2019 and that, you know. She aged. She aged, right. 20 years has passed and that people are older than they were also, before. Also, technically, aren't we past Judgment Day, like timeline-wise? I believe so. I believe oh, so. Okay. So you don't have to worry about it anymore. Yeah. We can all breathe a sigh of relief. The Judgment Day is But passed. clearly Judgment Day still happens. May, oh, yeah, I guess so. Oh, I think there was something in 3 where it was like Judgment... Because in 3, the, wasn't a plot point in 3 that ju- the date of Judgment Day had passed and that John Connor now had no idea what to fucking do with himself because he'd been part of it. training and so then it was like... But it turns out that... Then there was kind of a whole thing in that movie about like, well, Judgment Day is is inevitable. It's always going to happen, and you know you got to fucking step up and be. Been so long since I've seen. I think three is not the worst movie I've ever seen. Like I said, it's it's mediocre at best. Like, don't get me wrong. I I I like. I I feel like the actor who they got to play John Connor was not that great. No, that is true. That Um, is true. You know, uh, the the lady that they got to play the Terminator, I was okay with yeah. uh, in that one. The T-2000 or whatever the fuck they called her. I don't remember. Three, who cares? Um, and then um, and Claire Danes. <laughs> yeah. And Claire Danes was there. Yeah. For just, whatever reason. Just John Connor's uh, wife. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, anyway, I don't know. It, it, Hell, who who knows? You know, it, it could be good. It could be bad. At this point, it could really flip either way. There's nothing to really say. Um, I don't have as much of an emotional involvement in the Terminator franchise. Oh, I don't have that been, kind of attachment to it. No. They, they've I, been doing a good job to disabuse me of having any real feelings about Terminator for a long time now. Uh, I still have a lot of feelings about John Luke Picard, though. 
This this trailer for Picard, Star Trek Picard, Star Trek Picard. It makes me nervous, John. Why? It's so dour. Yeah. Like, and I I I don't want Jean Luc Picard. Like, okay, I only watched the first episode of Star Trek Discovery, and I was like, eh, I don't think this is for me, right? So I just stopped watching it. Uh, also, I'm not going to buy that CBS All Access Pass because yeah. I'm just not going to pay for that. But like, you know, I. <laughs> I just I don't want I don't want to see sad Picard like I just don't want to I don't I mean Picard's been sad before but then he like gets over and he goes out and he captains spaceships and like that that show or at least the first episode of Star Trek Discovery was so just like dark and gritty and fucking well, this is a serious Star Trek show and like I, I don't know I like it when Star Trek is you know a fun space adventure and I think it can have consequences, but I just, I don't know. The way that this trailer is shot, it's just so moody and it's dark and, you know, that, ah, you retired from Starfleet. You're, uh, you're a the broken man. Uh, well, it kind you know, of insinuated like, that he didn't retire. Yeah. Or at least he was not retired by choice. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't know. Uh, I, <sighs> this is, this is just a thing. That's my own personal thing where I'm like, I'm, I'm tired of dark and heavy, right? I'm, yeah. Like, I, that's why I like the MCU so much is because the MCU is, like, light and fluffy and, like, you can just have a good time and watch it. And, you know, that's not to say there aren't heavy episodes of Star Trek The Next Generation. There totally are heavy episodes of Star Trek The Next There's Generation. heavy episodes of all the Star Treks. Absolutely. It's just, I guess that, I wonder if Star Trek Discovery ever lightened up and started having fun or if it was always just going to be, like, oppressively serious um, I don't know. I don't know. I I mean, also, you know, this trailer doesn't really show a lot. It doesn't. Don't, it doesn't. I mean, I don't. I don't think they've even been filming or been filming much yet. I mean, I know they filmed some of it. I mean, I'm um, making a lot of inferences, and a lot of it is because I I wasn't a fan of the first episode of Star Trek Discovery. So yeah. my perspective could be just totally wackadoo. I don't know. What do you do? What do you think? I I I I'd be interested in watching it. Yeah. Because it looks interesting, and having read some of the uh, interviews uh, with the people who are behind it about what the show is about, mm-hmm. um, it's very interesting. It's a drama about making wine in the future. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, it, it's interesting to me, so, you know, I I, I don't know. Like, I, I'd, I'd be willing to watch it, but I'm not like, again, I don't subscribe to CBS All Access, and I'm not... Not going. about to. <laughs> I'm not about to, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I... I just Star Trek's been like the thing is that Star Trek is one franchise where it was kind of going away from me. Like I have a real weird relationship with the Star Trek franchise and I kind of hope that it doesn't keep moving further away from what I want to see out of Star Trek, which and maybe that's what people want to see. Right. Um, I like I liked the first Abrams movie. I thought the second two were kind of but, you know. Uh, it's maybe what it is, John, is just that like Star Wars is hit or miss with me these days. Like I didn't like that Star Trek Discovery, Doctor Who. I'm not really into anymore. Like a lot of the franchises that I was really, really into, especially science fiction franchises, have all moved to a place that I'm not just super fond of. And uh, you know, it wasn't bad when Star Trek Discovery was like, "Hey, we got our own crew of misfits, and we're doing our own thing, and it's a parallel universe." And I'm like, "Okay, whatever. Who cares?" You know, if I don't like it, that's fine. But I'm like, "But that's Jean Luc Picard, man. Like, I like that guy. I would like I what wanna... a parallel universe. What are you talking about for Discovery? Oh yeah, it was. was did, I don't know if they ever did, but they, I don't, yeah, that's true. They, they they did explain how the right. reason the reasons why it's already hit the point where the series is actually everyone's like, oh shit, yeah, I'm interested to see where the next seri- season goes because now it's interesting where everything is shiny glass and then in ten years it's going to all look like the '60s show. <laughs> um, yeah, but no, I mean it, it's it, but they they did some explanations on a lot of that stuff. Um, I don't know. I just, I know spoilers. So okay, I just I would like it if the Picard show was just. Picard giving a bunch of good Picard speeches and flying around doing Picard stuff. Um, and like just the just the voiceover in this, it seems like somebody's questioning Picard and that one shot of him where it looks like he's like in front of like a tribunal or something. I don't know. I it just it just doesn't 
Also, he's got a collar on his shirt, which is weird. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, uh, let's stop talking about Star Trek and start talking about video games. Uh, I'm, I'm okay with that. Let's let's talk about some video games. Yeah. Let's talk about... I like video games. Well, you know, when people... You know what people like a lot about video games is when they go on sale and you can get a lot of really good games for, yeah. you know, a relatively yeah. lower price. And uh, and and so the Epic Game Store has been doing that. They had their Epic Mega Sale uh, that started last week, uh, and uh, it's kind of been a fiery shit show. Kind of been a fiery yeah. shit show. Yeah. Uh, so apparently, several developers. Okay. Like on Steam, when they go when they have a sale, people will like opt into the Steam sale, right? So like the developer will offer their game, but then they'll. I don't know if it would reduce price because they get more traffic during sales, more availability, whatever. Apparently for this sale, Epic is like dropped everything by ten dollars across the board and they're eating that profit. Yeah. Like Epic itself is like eating the that. People profit. are still getting their full profits, but right. Ep- but but Epic is eating the profit right. themselves. Um which has caused some kind of weird things to happen. Like like if you wanted to price match what your game was on the Epic Store, if your game was on Steam, then you would have to eat the the ten dollars on Steam, right? Steam yeah. doesn't cover that cost. So there've been a couple of weird things that have happened here. One, Vampire the Masquerade um, was delisted. Yeah, because it was up on there for pre for pre order for pre order ten dollars off. Um, there was a statement from. Uh, one of the directors who said that like he felt like he didn't like kind of read how this sale was going to work properly and that they didn't want to essentially devalue the game before it was out. Yeah. Um, which, I mean, I feel like other platforms have pre-order sales, like uh, Steam a lot of times, but uh, I guess Vampire the Masquerade is is like going to be a full-on $60 game. Like Usually, like a lot of times I'll see something like, um, uh, what, like Plague Tale will be like $5 off on Steam if you pre-order it, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but they said that they didn't want that to happen. Also, uh, just recently, Borderlands 3 got delisted. They put out a kind of a, uh, just kind of a real basic statement uh, that said, we are working closely with Epic and have temporarily removed Borderlands 3 from the storefront. We look forward to the game being back on the Epic Game Store soon. Games bought during the mega sale will be honored at their at that price. Um you know, games like that John Wick Hex from Mike Mithel, yeah. which was fifteen dollars, is like five dollars, right? Wow. Of, uh, or somehow it's super, super cheap. Yeah. Um also there was some weirdness that happened with Hades where so Hades is twenty dollars, and they were originally planning as they went through early access. Yeah, and they actually said that from the very beginning when they when they released it on there. They said this is the price for right now, but as we get close, as we add more content to it and get closer to the actual physical release, right, the price um, will be the price will gradually up. go up. Um, so I think it's I think that in the article that I was reading that it started on the store. Like it started on the sale at like seven dollars or something like that, and then suddenly went up to to um, let's see, it's briefly priced incorrectly at seven dollars, and then it went up to um, it went back, it went to fourteen dollars, and now it's up to twenty four dollars, and like they they brought it back down to the twenty dollar price that it originally was because they were planning on doing this, and I I don't. I get the impression this is a lot of crossed wires that they ended up just yeah. making this adjustment during the sale and it, it kind of didn't re- yeah with it, everything it, yeah and it looked like what they were doing was raising the price of their game to like cash in on the sale on the sale discount by raising the base price of their game and then with Epic chipping in the other ten dollars right then they will be making yeah. more profit than they would normally be making apparently that was not the case they brought it back down you know they said that it was a kind of a mistake. Um, yeah, they said they are gonna. They're gonna keep it at the price that it's supposed to be at the the actual what it's supposed to be under the sale, right? Um, and then after the sale ends, then it'll go back to the price that it was that they accidentally flipped it to at the time of the sale. Yeah, because they didn't realize the sale was going to be going on at the same time. And yeah, um, so all that happened. Um, it seems like okay. Uh, oh, and then one last thing, and then we can talk about what this actually means. Yeah. Um, the fucking Epic Game Store still doesn't have a cart. It still no. doesn't have a, a a cart to put stuff in. You have no. to buy each thing individually. And apparently there have been reports of people who have bought like three or four games in a row and then had their accounts locked down because 
of like a fraud detection thing. Yeah. Because Epic's fraud detection is high. And, you know, you're, you you didn't buy anything, and suddenly you're just like, game, 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 game. You're buying all these, and it just like kicks. I mean, that shit happens when I bank all the time, but like... Yeah. This seems like it's a direct consequence of the fact that their store doesn't have a shopping cart, which still is like, how how would you even have a, a sale before you implemented a shopping cart in your store? Yeah. Which, all this comes back to the Epic Game Store, and I, it's such a poorly run thing right now. Like, it's just, it, it there's so many, I mean, it's not like this is the first you know, the first online game store that's ever existed, right? Like, yeah. there's plenty of examples between, you know, Origin and, and Steam and Bethesda and the consoles and, like, you know, good old games. Like, there's a ton of examples of how to do a store right. And part of me, you know, was kind of willing to cut Epic some slack because it was like they were obviously kind of putting this up to get it up quick and yeah. they were going to try trying. to refine it later. But it just seems like their priorities seem like it seems like a shopping cart would be a higher priority than having a sale just for ease of use. You know, they don't have the, the, the community features and all that bullshit that people like on steam, but you know, a shopping cart, right? That's a, that's a basic web commerce one Oh one right there. Lord knows I want Nintendo to add a shopping cart for the, for the Switch. Oh, yeah. It, it doesn't have one either, does no, it? No, no, it doesn't. It's, you can just add it to like a wish list, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you got to buy them one at a time. Yeah, I just, I don't understand. I mean, I, I it's, and, and the thing is that. I think Microsoft is the same way on the Xbox. Really? Yeah. I think Sony's PlayStation is the only one that actually has a cart out of the consoles. Even, even Sony's is kind of janky well it's just like when you add something in there it takes you to kind of the checkout page and then you can you know it takes you to an interim page where you can say proceed to checkout or continue shopping and uh, this is probably not a problem for most human beings but it is for jeff because when you hit continue shopping like if you're on the new games page it takes you back up to like the top of the new games page so if you're like browsing down a page yeah it's like you have to scroll back down these are minor issues but yes you can put everything in a cart Hit proceed to check out. You can do it on Steam as well. I, I guess I just don't understand. And it, and it seems like the sort of thing that should be implemented. I mean, I, I've been saying I want somebody to compete with Steam. Like, I don't think Steam is ever going to improve their platform out of the goodness of their hearts. Like, I think they've shown us that they will not do that over the years. It's just a shame that they're one competitor. Like, if Epic was running a really solid store um, and then they weren't just like gobbling up exclusives quite as hard, which I, I think you have to do in order to yeah. compete. But like if they were running a really superior product to what steam had, then it would be a lot easier to get in their corner. But it just seems like it's every fucking like every week. It just seems like something else that Epic fucked up on their. their yeah. Store. They're, well, they're the new one. They're the right. It was fallout 76 for a while. It was Anthem for a while. And now it just seems like every fucking week there's some Epic game store. You know, we put up a sale. Where we put everything on sale. I tried to buy five games, got locked out of my account, had to email their support because of the fraud prevention. And it's just like, what are you doing? What, are you doing Epic Game Store? This is ridiculous. Yeah, I don't know. Do you have it installed? No, no, I've never installed the Epic Game Store. What would make you install the Epic Game Store? Uh, probably for me to actually play my computer, play games on my computer. <laughs> You've been doing I, much PC I, gaming recently? No, no, I haven't. Um, I don't know. What do you think? Do you think that they can? I mean, so far it seems like. They're just using Fortnite as a money crutch to just be like, it doesn't matter what the problems are. We're making enough money out of Fortnite to essentially run the whole show, you know. I mean, I don't I don't think, like, it's them just half-assing it. I think that there's honestly, uh, you know, they're trying to, to do stuff, but, it could, you know, they probably have a... They probably set up a uh, a timetable for certain things so they can work on certain things, and they've probably had to speed up that tom- timetable a little bit. Sure. To because they they want you know they want the money they want people to install the Epic Game Store and you know and they feel like they're doing the right thing. It's just unfortunately when they do the right thing, they also fuck up three other things. <laughs> I guess it's like it's weird because. There was that there was that thing like a few weeks back where they had that statement where they said like if Steam changed their 
profit matching that Epic would stop buying exclusives. Yeah. And it's like, well, okay, but wh- okay, so what are you, Epic Game Store? Do you want to make money? Are you trying to teach Steam a lesson? Like, I feel like it's a little bit of both. Okay. I feel like it's they're upset at the way Steam is is being run. Yeah. And they like you like you said you you want competition because if you have like a, a solid competitor come in and actually offer an alternative that will make maybe Valve get off their ass and fix the issues with Steam in an effort to stay relevant. I think it's the only um, way to make them do it. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like Epic is coming at this from that same position. Right. And it's not that they don't want games on Steam. It's not that they don't want Steam to be there. They want Steam to be better. Yeah. And so they're like, fuck it. We can do and it's that whole thing of, well, if you think you can do so much better, why don't you do it yourself? And right. Like, Fine. We'll fucking do it ourselves. And, you know, people, obviously people are, they're coming at it, but, you know, obviously they're hitting the, all of the, the pitfalls of doing this yourself. The stuff that Steam has already been through for, you know, already gone through all the, the growing pains of. Yes. Let, it, let us reiterate. Steam was garbage for years. I mean, it still is garbage, but like it was true trash for a long time. Like. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, no, it was it was unusual trash for a long time. Like it, Steam is actually the reason I stopped playing PC games for for a while there. Oh, when it was like, completely when like, it was a- I because it was very clear everyone was going to Steam. Yep, and I was just like I I never I did never installed Half Life Two on my PC because I fucking couldn't deal with that shit mm-hmm. uh, i mean it, like it in that in those days when it was attached to half-life 2 you were reading articles on the internet where like is steam malware you know like the idea of having to install a separate piece of software just to authenticate this game was like unheard of yeah. uh, I, and you know and it was just one of those things where I, I le- legitimately stopped playing PC games because everyone would start going through Steam. Right. And it wasn't until, like, I even, like, stopped using my computer and because uh, I didn't do anything on my computer. Yeah. Uh, you know, and then it wasn't. And then I switched over to Mac for editing purposes for a podcast I was doing. And, uh, you know, and then Steam came to Mac and I was like, well, let's see what this entails. And it wasn't bad. Like, it was definitely better experience than what I remembered. But Sure. Uh, I wouldn't say it was the best. I mean, I remember when articles were written like there were, you know, back when they used to sell physical PC games yeah. and there were some PC games where you would buy the PC game and inside would just be a piece of paper with a Steam key on it. And people were very upset about that. Yeah, people yeah. were livid that they didn't get an actual physical disc. So I don't know. I I still maintain that I think that Epic needs to. I'm glad there is an Epic game store. I just wish that they would kind of get their shit together yeah. and, and stop, just stop, you know. Like it seems like they're making very easily seen mistakes. I, I do feel like maybe they went a little bit too headstrong for the sale. Yeah, uh, and maybe they should have waited. Well, the well then the the response to that is right that like Steam Summer Sale is right around the corner, oh, yeah. and they were trying to like undercut it, undercut the Steam Sale before the Steam Sale happened, which you know. I don't know. I guess I just feel like the whole thing stinks of... I mean, if you got the money to buy all these console exclusives, maybe use a little bit of that money to buy some UX guys to pull some overtime hours and put a cart on your store. Or like, you know, uh, put some forums in or whatever. I mean, I can put forums on my fucking website, and it's not that difficult. Like, I could probably figure out how to do that this weekend. So, anyway. Glad they're there. Wish they would be better. You know, I'm not one of those just like, fuck Epic. Um, but... I definitely understand why people are mad. Yeah. Uh, okay, moving on. We got a uh, we got a brief tweet of like a camera phone recording. Yeah. This is a, a thing. The next gen PlayStation, PlayStation Five. Uh, somebody's doing like a demonstration for actual like games press, and somebody took a video of the demonstration. We've actually heard about this before of like the load times and whatever, and a lot of this seems to be with Spider-Man that they're using. Yeah, they're using Spider-Man, because <laughs> Spider-Man's actually, like, a really well-made uh, game for that. Yeah, so, like, the first thing they did was they, they showed the load times, where PS4 Pro, 4K Spider-Man has, like, a 15-second load time. Uh, their development hardware for the PS5 has a 0.8-second load time. Yeah. So, like, uh, and then they also showed kind of a uh, like a scene where they're they're moving the camera through the city very quickly, and on the PS4 Pro, it kind of has to stop and load the next chunk 
of things uh, every so often. Whereas with the next gen, with the PS5 or whatever it is, they're it's able just to be smooth, smooth light speed kind of through there. It is a little, it is a little odd just because um, I saw somebody pointing this out that like, you know, doing benchmark tests for your next gen console with current gen games is like, you know, eh, but but still. Um, it seems like Sony's really doubling down on the whole. Like the biggest thing seems to be this solid state hard drive and trying to get these yeah. load times way down. Um, but it's interesting and it does show that because before it was just like it was like a Wall Street Journal interview with Mark Cerny or something like yeah. that. Uh, but here we can actually see it. You could you could look at this tweet, you could look at this video, and you could see it happening in real time. Um, I don't know. It's weird, John. I'm just I'm so used to there being load times in games that I don't know if I I. I I feel like it would be weird to play a game that just didn't have any load times whatsoever. I guess my the biggest example that I have of that was when I played Skyrim on the PS3 and it took like five minutes to load between like quick travel points. And on the PC, it's like you could quick save and quick load. And it took like four seconds. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. Probably still not going to see anything this year. Oh, no, no. I, I, I honestly believe we're not going to get any announcements until next year. But probably next year. But yeah. almost, I feel like almost certainly... 2020 with the way that everybody's building up to it yeah of course i don't know i mean that would be a that would be a real gasping e3 moment if because sony's not there if microsoft used this year right when sony's not there to like be like here's our new console and all these brand new games bitch but i don't know uh, from there, let's move on to something a little drier uh so loot boxes and the law and politics, unfortunately. So we reported, it was like three or four weeks ago, uh, it was a Missouri senator who wanted to basically put forward uh, some actual legislation in the Senate uh, to make loot boxes and microtransactions aimed at children uh, illegal. Yeah. Uh, well, it appears that he has actually put forward that legislation. He with did some, what he said he was going to do. Some bipartisan yeah. stuff. And uh, we have a chance to actually look at some of the bill's contents. So, okay, um, I feel like up front, before we even start talking about this, we have to we have to get we have to be very clear about like why do we want microtransactions and loot boxes banned, John? Is it because we as gamers feel that it's intrusive and it makes the game worse, or is it because like? children might get addicted to gambling mechanics in a video game. We don't want to be fucking up their brains with gambling mechanics. Um, I mean, there's some people that... So I, it depends on who you ask, I feel like. Yes. Because, I mean... Exactly uh, my point. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it's it's very much... The, I think there was an actual research done into it, and it does show that the loot boxes, even the most innocuous of them, are very addictive and do actually warp children's brains in a in a weird way mm -hmm. uh, to make them more susceptible to addiction in their later life. Um, and and politicians have like jumped on that and yes. touted it as the thing. And and I don't even know if that that re I mean that that study was actually like well done <laughs> yeah. and like highly reputable or whatever you want to call it um and, and i don't know i don't know i don't i don't remember too much about it i, don't, I didn't read it I, I was like i don't care so the reason that i bring that up is because i feel like when gamers say that they don't like loot boxes they mean i don't like loot boxes because i don't like the intrusion into my game for fun reasons um but when Republican politicians put forward bills, they are putting forward bills to protect the children. Yeah. The reason that we should be very, very careful about letting this shit happen is because those politicians don't give a shit whether you are able to have fun in your video game at the end of the day. Um, they're there to protect the children. And so the thing is that if the laws that they enact spill over into other games and start taking things out here let me give you an example so the the bill has a whole thing that talks about loot boxes right like it defines loot boxes but the bill is not just about loot boxes it's also about pay to win microtransactions in quotey fingers right so one of the definitions in section seven of pay to win microtransactions is uh, uh something that quote eases a user's progression through content otherwise available within the game without the purchase 
of such a transaction. So if a thing that you pay money for makes it easier for you to do something in a game that that would have been harder if you hadn't have done it, right? Yeah. Well, technically, technically, like somebody pointed this out in this Game Informer article, so this is not totally me, but like the old hunters in Bloodborne, the weapons in that DLC make the base game easier if you get them because they're more powerful. Some of them are more powerful than the things that you have in the base game, right? Like there's a lot of... Well, the thing, the difference there is that you can't get those weapons unless you buy the DLC. Correct. So that, that's not the same thing. Eases the user's progression through content otherwise available within the game without the purchase of such transactions? Yeah, if you can't get those weapons without purchasing the DLC, then the DLC is not considered pay to win. I I think we're reading this differently, personally. I mean, I, I the, the way that I see it is eases the user's progression through content otherwise available within the game, right? Makes because the, the DLC easier. is not easy, is not available in the game. Right. Unless you buy the DLC. Right. So that would not be considered pay to win. Why not? Because that those weapons are not in the game otherwise. Let me, let me, ask you, let me put it this way. What's the difference between me buying the Old Hunters DLC or buying a $20 weapon off of the PlayStation Store that makes Bloodborne easier? Right. What's the difference between me buying a DLC package that has more powerful weapons in it or just straight up buying a $5 Super Sword off of the PlayStation Store. Like, they both cost money. They both affect what the base game is. They both contain things that make the base game easier. I mean, I agree. It's a slippery slope. But what I'm saying is there is a difference. Right. But, okay. And what I'm saying is that I don't... There, there. This is one of, like, a bunch of addendums in here. Yeah. And that this, especially the microtransaction section of this, the, the quote-unquote pay-to-win part of this, defining pay-to-win requires... Like what we're again, what this comes down to is what we're talking about is the difference between what is the difference between I can pay for a better gun or I can pay for DLC so that has a better gun in it. I, I, I to me, is the weapon right. that you're buying, yes, is it available in the game without having to buy it? No, like maybe it's like super hard to get and like one of the like super difficult, and, and anyone who plays the game, there's maybe a one in one thousandth chance that they'll ever get it, but it can be done. No. That's I mean you know Bloodborne's weapons are in the Old Hunters DLC, yeah, not in the base Cause that, game because that would because that's when you say pay to win that's kind of what I it's it's not giving you something that you didn't have access to previously it's giving you something that if you play the game you're gonna get eventually anyways you're just paying to get it sooner the 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 the, the language in this bill would cover both of those uh, okay because i'm just saying what you read to me sounds like it's talking about what i'm talking about not what you're talking about i, I, I get what you're saying i read it okay listen let me, put, let me put it this way i read an interview with this guy right okay. the guy that put forward the, yeah. the legislation he doesn't know the difference between those I, two and things. i'm not arguing that and like there's a whole thing in here about um section five minor oriented game the term minor oriented video game means an interactive digital entertainment product for which the target audience is individuals under the age of 18 as may be demonstrated by the subject matter of the product the visual content of the product the music or audio content of the product the use of animated characters or activities that appeal to individuals under the age of 18 the age of characters uh of the characters or models in the product the presence in the product of celebrities who are under the age of 18 or celebrities who appeal to individuals under the age of 18. The language used. I mean, like, all this stuff is That's just... That's all generic bullshit. Right. But the, 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 I guess what I'm getting to here is that this could be applied to anything. No, no, right? I agree. Like, no, 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 that's what I'm saying. That's so, generic bullshit that could be applied to anything. Yeah. And, and so that. the reason that this makes me really nervous is because between the pay-to-win definitions and between the appeals to gamers that are under 18, because they don't actually talk about about the ESRB, right? Like, yeah. they could say that if it's T for teen, like, right, then it can have any of this bullshit in it, right? But if it's E for everyone, then it can't. But the idea that this is the set of metrics that we're using when we have a rating system for video games means that this type of legislation could be applied to video games that that it doesn't, that it would have, what well, where... Technically, it would be to quote unquote save the children, but it would be impacting my ability to enjoy Mortal Kombat 11. Mortal Kombat 11 is an M rated game. But, like, you know, there are plenty of T14 games that I feel like could get kind of boned in this. So, 
I wanted to bring this up because I think that everyone should go read this bill. And Kotaku's Jason Schreier had a whole like phone conversation with this guy where they talk about it. This guy does not play games. He does not give a shit about gamers. He says he's doing this for his kids. His kids do not play games. He has, quote, unquote, heard from parents about the microtransactions, yada, 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 right? So the reason that we want to do this in the gaming world is because politicians don't give a shit with what once they're done with these with this you know making this quote unquote illegal about making sure that they aren't overreaching to the point where consenting adults over the age of 20 who want to play something violent or with a gambling mechanic or with DLC or with pay to win mechanics can do so and that the shit doesn't get swept up yeah. in legislation to make yeah. it illegal that's all i'm saying uh, because I feel like there's a lot of people who are going to be – who are sick of microtransactions and sick of loot boxes. And of course you are. They suck and game industry seems to want to put them everywhere who are just like rah, rah for this bill. But like fuck this guy. Like I mean I've read this interview and this is what happens when we – let's all be very clear is here. This, so here's my – is this a more uh, um, capable version of Jack Thompson? Yes. Um, yeah. Let, let, just, yeah. Can we be a hundred percent clear here? Like politicians uh, uh, and and businessmen and like older people and a lot of like you know parents and shit like that. They don't play games and they still see it as baby shit. They still see games as the th- like they, they think all games are Fortnite, right? Or that they know that there's like Red Dead and Grand Theft Auto, but like they don't even they don't like those because they're very violent and they just see games as this thing that is for children. And so we should be very, very careful about letting these people I agree. create very general, you know, uh, 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 guidelines that then the entire game industry has to follow. It's why it's such a shame that the ESRB wouldn't do anything to try to internally regulate this stuff because then you could at least point to that and say, well, there is no need for this because th- this bill has bipartisan support. Yeah. Like politicians and uh, old people. If I'm not mistaken, the ASRB has tried and essentially the people in the government have been like, yeah, but you're not a government uh, g- group, so go fuck yourself. I mean, if I... I'm pretty sure I remember this correctly from when we were talking about loot boxes all the time, but the ESRB basically came down and decided that, like, loot boxes weren't a thing that they needed to deal with. Yeah. Okay. Like, yeah. Good um, point. No, I do remember that. Uh, and, you know, and meanwhile, like, Nintendo this week turned off um, Animal Crossing and uh, one of the other games, uh, the phone games in Belgium, because Belgium passed that anti-loot box law. Yeah. So, it, like, it would... it. it you know, in this in this interview with Jason Schreier, he asked this guy like, "Well, you know, EA relies on loot boxes to make FIFA profitable. You know, what would you say to somebody who says that if you make loot boxes illegal, that FIFA won't be a game anymore?" And his answer is, "Well, you know, they're very smart guys. I'm sure they'll figure something out." And it's like, well, yeah, it's obvious that this guy is doing this to make brownie points with his constituency. the The writing is very loose and lackadaisical. I really recommend that everybody just go read it if you're if you're just so that you know what's going on, right? It takes all about ten minutes yeah. to read, so I don't know. It freaks me out. So, all right, let's kick it into high gear, John. Uh, so not this year, but next year's Call of Duty apparently isn't going to be made by Sledgehammer anymore. Yeah, it's going to be made by Treyarch, and it's going to be another Black Ops. So weird. Black Ops Four, Black Ops Five in twenty twenty. And Sledgehammer has been – apparently there was some problems with Sledgehammer, Sledgehammer and Raven. And uh, Sledgehammer and Raven are now going to be basically supporting Treyarch in the idea of making um, a, a new Black Ops. That's weird. Yeah. Um, don't know what's going on over there at Activision, but it just doesn't seem like the best. Or I don't know. Again, maybe – we're just going back to like Jeff wishes things were the way they were. Like I like the single player campaigns in a lot of the Call of Duty games. Kind of wish we could have them back. I don't know. Maybe Black Ops Five will have a single player campaign. Maybe who knows? I mean, John, I know how much you care about Call of Duty and like how you you're always in line at midnight launch and pre order it. You know? Yeah, yeah. You pla- you, uh, at least when they had single player campaigns. <laughs> um. So yeah, we can look forward to that. Um. 
Another thing we can look forward to, or another thing you can look forward to, is uh, The Sims 4, which is free right now. Yeah! Which I already own. I uh, I noticed this because I saw a bunch of people on Twitter because The Sims 4 was trending, and it was nothing but people who were like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I spent like two hundred and twenty five dollars on this game and the expansions, and now it's free. Like only the the base noise. game is free. You still have to buy the expansions. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, if you, uh, I think it's going on. I think by the time that this podcast comes out, you'll have like one more day. Yeah, uh, May twenty eighth. But if you go log into Origin, you can get The Sims Four for free. Play The Sims Four. Remember when The Sims Four came out and everybody was mad at that? Yeah, because it didn't have all the things The Sims Three had. Yeah, and then they've released expansions to add stuff back in. Yeah. Because, and those expansions know, expansions are all fucking expensive. They are. If you want to get all the things th- for The Sims 4, I feel like even if the base game is free, it's going to so, cost you several hundred dollars. When they had that, what was it, Strangerville or whatever it was called, uh, expansion that recently came out. Yeah. Uh, kind of weird like, X-Files one. Yeah, yeah. I was like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to, I've already, you know, I've got the base Sims 4. How much could it be? <laughs> How much would it be to buy everything between now and then? I was like, oh, I'm already well over $200. Go fuck yourself. And it's closed, it's just closed origin never to be opened again. Yep. Yep. But hey, you want to play The Sims 4? There you go. I know that there's a whole... there's a, the, the, I know there are some free updates. Yeah. So, you know, you're not... And, and I mean, one of the things is that with The Sims 4 that I feel like is is their business model is you're never supposed to bu- do what you did and try yeah. to buy everything. You're supposed to like be like, oh, you know, I've been having fun with The Sims 4. I want to put some pets in here. Let me get the pets one. That's $20. And then next month you're, you're like... You're supposed to get them as uh, they come out yeah. over time. Yeah. So, you know. You're never supposed to see the sticker shock of putting them all into your... Or Does, does Origin have a shopping cart? Uh, I think it does, yeah. Okay. You never put them all in Origin shopping cart at one time and just go... <laughs> I could buy so many things for this that are not just virtual. I could buy the things that are in this game in the real world instead of buying virtual dogs. So um, next up, uh, this is a really interesting thing that happened last week. So apparently the the publisher of Firewatch, uh, which is – what the hell is the name of this? Play? No. The Okay. Panic. From app developer Panic, um, the publisher of Firewatch Untitled Goose Game announced this thing called the play date. Have you seen this, John? Yes, I have. I, I figured you would have seen this. You would have wanted this. I, You know, I, I, I'm I, interested. I, I, I am already subscribed to be notified. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I am, I am also confused by it. <laughs> so this is a handheld with it a is, black and white screen. Yeah, it is a black and white screen. It is not backlit, so mm-hmm. you won't be able to... Uh, you know, you play it in the dark. Yeah. Uh, it's got a D-pad and two buttons. Yep. And a hand crank. Yep. And on the right-hand side, it's got a little hand crank that comes in and out. Um, and so that crank is not... Like, at first I thought, oh, this is going to be like some kind of... Power it yourself. Yeah, like crank it up, power it yourself, take like, it wherever no, you want to. that's a controller function. Yeah, so it, tur- it turns out that there's going to be like controller functionality that uses this crank so you can have the d-pad in one hand and the crank in the other and be cranking a crank uh not only that but the game is the 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 thing is going to have 12 games that is going to come out like one a week uh, uh, one each month actually, one each month for a year oh okay um and that you get them all when you buy it yeah like, so you you don't have to buy those games like when you buy it the fact that you own the console you will get them all yeah as they're released um i think if you're if you buy it like because i also think it's one of those things that people are like oh so if i buy it like later on and it's like life cycle i'll be able to get all the backlog and the thing is i think they said that when they're only doing one batch of this and once it's gone it's gone oh, it says one a week oh okay maybe it's one a week okay never mind yeah 12 weeks Sorry, I, I wanted to check that because that's. Uh, um, but I, yeah, I misunderstood. No, it's but it's really fascinating looking. Like it's just yeah, it's a, it's, it's interesting. And the developers they have that are making these games are interesting too. Mm-hmm. It's like Bennett Foddy from getting up Bennett Foddy and Quap, and then uh, uh, Katamari Damacy K, uh, developer uh, Keita Takahashi. Yeah, um, yeah. So like a bunch of little mini games, this little hand crank thing. It's a, the only thing is let's let's see it's one hundred and fifty dollars. It's one hundred and fifty dollars. That's kind of the the lo- a, the, th- the place where a lot of people are like, I don't know about this. I mean, yeah, I'm getting twelve games, but what are the quality of those games? Right. Also, what's the quality of this device? 
also will there be more games than just the 12 games like is it just the 12 games and that's it that's all it's ever going to be released or is there going to be like a season two where you pay something and it does an update to it that d- allows you to download more yeah um but in any case it's at least something it's something interesting it's interesting yeah, yeah. like i i i am i am intrigued by it i want to know more like i i you know if this were the the uh, Starship Troopers. I would click on want to know more. <laughs> um, yeah. So I don't know. Go check it out. Maybe somebody. Maybe somebody can buy us one. If somebody has a hundred extra hundred fifty bucks, and they can buy us one. I'm so broke right now. Uh, I probably should have put this story earlier. But uh, John, did you read about the good old galaxy? Good old games galaxy two point I didn't even know there was a good old games galaxy one point Okay, let's start at the beginning. So in the beginning, there was good old games, and you could go download DOS games from good old games, and then they put out good old games galaxy. Good old games galaxy was a front end. It was like Steam, right? Yeah. So instead of buying it off the website and downloading it, you would have your library and you could install whatever you want to. This week, good old games galaxy two point was announced. Now, John. What do you think Good Old, Gal- Good Old Games Galaxy 2.0 does that has it and is a news story and not just as a thing that I don't pay attention to? Well, I have actually read the news or glanced over the news story. So oh. I'm assuming it organizes your games even if they're not through Good Old Games. Yes. Uh, it has not yet been confirmed, but the conceit that seems to be implicated from this is that this front end can be used to essentially manage, install, and or play games from, like, you can't play console games, but you can add console games, and it'll track, like, your 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 playtime. It's also supposed to integrate your friends list I from think it, different I think, things. I think it does integrate your Xbox Live stuff, uh-huh. so, like, the stuff that's on both that you, because with Xbox Live, uh, anything you bought, anything that's, like, cross-compatible, like, it, you also get access to it on PC. Right. Um, and I think it does track that. Yeah. Uh, so, like, you know, I think you can tie your console handle you know like screen handle into it and it looks at like obviously you can't install it on the pc but it right. tracks like stuff. well yeah i mean because they all have apis right yeah. for like integration into different like web pages and stuff like yeah. that uh so i think the, the idea that they want to have here right is that you just install a little game galaxy 2.0 and then you connect it to like your steam library your origin library your bethesda epic library game. your epic game store your playstation network your xbox your nintendo account and then you can see everything and then for pc games i think the idea is that you can install it now that isn't specifically laid out like i did a lot of searches to try to find whether they said that specifically and right now what they've said is like with all the major, you know, uh, software platforms on the PC, like they haven't specifically talked about Steam or Epic yeah. Games or stuff. I'd like to point out that this was an April Fool's joke. Uh, th- there was another company that had exactly what this is: is the April Fool's joke this year. Oh wow! It was like the 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 game. The, I think it was like the Asus Game Launcher launcher, where it was like finally a launcher for all of your game launchers. Now you can install, you know. Um, but if this actually worked, I would be, I would be very happy. Like if I could get, I, I would be so happy if they could pull store data from all the different stores and just and like allow you to buy, show me one store that has all the things instead yeah. of having to open up eight different things. But then you're, 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 uh, when you open the store, you just be bombarded with all the steam, uh, shovelware. And it would just take over everything, and you couldn't find columns for columns, each store. Columns. Okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I think it's a good idea. I don't know if they're going to be able to pull it off, but if they can pull it off, or because it's called Galaxy, right? Each each store is yeah. its own individual galaxy that's like has a three dimensional model that you have to go in and find. Okay, each, each game is a different planet, and it's and then, only accessible via an Oculus Rift. Yeah, is you yeah. have to fly through the cosmo, fly through the good old games galaxy, and find your games. Um, I, it's sad I that know. we've come to a point where this seems like I'm something I'm really kind of excited about, but uh, you know, um, I'm gonna start cutting some of these out. Ouya! Oh, poor Ouya. The Ouya store is closing! It is gone. That means that the Ouya is... I mean, unless you have stuff installed on it, not functional anymore, because it was just... It had no... Well, it's functional if you hack it. Oh, well, yes. Just not functional as it was originally intended. Right. 
Uh, Though you're... one of the things about it was that it was easily customizable and hackable. That was like a selling point for it during the Kickstarter. When was the last time you played in your area? Oh, I fuck if I know. Is it? Do you even know where it is? Uh, yes. Okay. I do. Um, let's see. June twenty fifth, twenty nineteen is the last day the store is up. So if you've got yourself an Ouya, go out there and download as much as you can. I, I, if I'm not mistaken, I stopped messing with my Hulu when, or not Hulu, uh, Ouya. Yeah. When it got bought by Nvidia, I have no idea. Or Razor, might have been Razor. Whoever they bought it, I know it says in that article that you're looking at. Uh, who their parent company is. Razor. Right? Razor. Yeah. Yeah. When Razor pretty much bought Ouya yeah. and said, we're taking over everything, I was like, all right, cool, I'm out. It, also, that was at a time when Ouya was really not in a good place. <laughs> I was, was already one foot out the door. It was an interesting concept. Yeah. Uh, micro console that plays Android games, basically. It, it, and I, like It... You know, I thought the controller, while kind of, I thought it had some interesting uh, aspects to it. Though yeah. It, it was kind of a shit controller. Uh, and the little micro Android console was interesting. I like, you know, the small compactness of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it kind of kickstarted the the wave of Android-based consoles. Like, there was a wave of them. Oh, Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. When you, said, when you said stick. that, I, I made a I made a, a face because I was trying to remember the if any of them stick. survived. Yes. Oh no, none of them survived. Yeah, but uh, you know, and I just remember people being like so upset, like at the Kickstarter, mm-hmm. but yet. I feel like their ki- like a lot of people like looked at uh, the Ouya as like a failure as far as Kickstarter is concerned. Yeah, but like it was really profitable. During the Kickstarter, they were very open about what was going on. Yes, things got delayed severely, but they were still open to it. When they delivered it, they delivered exactly what they said they were going to deliver. No different. And it worked. And they lasted maybe a year, maybe two years, and then had to sell to uh, to Razor Razor because they made a bunch of uh, monetary promises that they could not commit to and couldn't afford to, uh, you know. Uh, and I, I do think that there were games that were made for the Ouya specifically that um, always saddened me that they were exclusive to Ouya okay. for contracts and will never be released on any other uh, uh, device, even though they totally should. Don, um, get your Ouya, man. Get your Ouya and download all those games. Let's play them before the, the, before the but, end of June. We'll do an Ouya retrospective. I'll find all the best games from the Ouya and then play them. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, that was. I mean, that that's. No, I mean, do it. Go now. Uh, Go for reals. <laughs> okay. All right, I'll be back. I mean, after we get done with the podcast. Oh, okay. After we get done with the podcast. Uh, so yeah, pour pour one out for the Ouya. Uh, let's see. Judgment's got a new voice actor, and it's back on sale in Japan. Yeah, so, they changed the face, and then they got him a new voice actor. Did they change the face? Uh, they did change it a little bit because the original face looked exactly like the actor who oh, was okay. originally. So they actually changed the face uh, to look different. Okay, like it's not too heavily changed, but it's it's enough that it's doesn't look like him anymore. Okay, and we're big, we'll be seeing that in the West June twenty fifth. Yes, so. I'm excited. In the next month, that's going to be my birthday present from somebody. I hope. <laughs> uh, let's talk about a few trailers here. Uh, Minecraft Earth. Was a trailer that we saw this week? Yeah, yeah. This is they're going into the AR market. Yeah, doing a Pokemon Go, but for Minecraft, I I think this is brilliant. Yeah. I mean, like Pokemon Go was such a was such a big thing, and as I feel like they built up the AR tech with their like what was it the 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 what were the glass thing that they the the windows uh, oh god damn it my brain yeah my brain just uh, froze on it. The Hololens, Hololens, yeah. Like they set up all this like uh, AR technology with Minecraft and the Hololens, and the Hololens ain't ever going to be mass produced for con- for public consumption. No. And I feel like the the people at Mahjong kind of went, we we should do something with this, yeah, because people would want this. Which so apparently you know you can roll around in the world and you'll see Minecraft blocks. And you can tap on them, you can get blocks, you can go places, you can build with blocks, and it's all on AR. Um, you know, apparently they. I was talking to John where they have this tech that like keeps you out of the street. Like they they won't put things near like 
yeah. busy intersections or places where you're going to get hit by a car or something. Uh, you can set down big build pads in certain places and people can go, you know, a bunch of kids can all run up with their phones and like help build a thing together. That's fine. This all seems like a good idea. Yeah. Also, Minecraft seems like one of the easiest things in the world to do in AR because everything's a Voxel. square. Yeah, yeah. So, like, you don't have to worry about a, what your magic carp looks like flying through the air or sitting on the ground or whatever. It's just a, it's just a square. So, uh, let's see. We got some new footage for Neo 2. Yeah. Looks like more Neo. Yes, it does. Though, it, there is some interesting things about the trailer. Yep. Uh, there's definitely some kind of like some magical, like turn into a giant monster, turn into a big Oni thing. Yeah. Also, uh, there are, I, I just based on this, either, uh, either you're playing as a, a female character in the game in like a samurai suit and they're hiding it, or you can swap gen or you can play as different genders. I'd be willing to bet it's probably a create your own character, um, because I feel like that was one of the complaints for the first game was the yeah. the kind of silly white guy. Uh, anyway, there's going to be a, a big beta for this uh, on the PlayStation 4. There's going to be a closed beta happening, uh, I think it's towards the end of this month, and then yeah. like a little bit into June. Uh, but for everybody who liked Neo, hey, good news. You're getting a getting lot more, more Neo. Neo. Yeah. yeah. I hope that they – I hope that it's a little bit um, – I hope they don't go the the Dark Souls route and just make it – blazingly difficult i liked neo up until a point and then i feel like it got really repetitive so um i would kind of like it if it was a little bit less repetitive because they wanted you to like go back to the same areas and play like a remixed version of that area yeah. and it was just like i don't want to do that a whole bunch of times um like i liked the the first few levels but i don't know we'll see uh mutants year zero is getting a new expansion called seed of evil nice uh new mutant uh is a big moose guy he's a moose he breathes fire he's got a real gravelly voice um with a new map new storyline new mutants uh for anybody who is into mutant year zero it's more mutant year it's zero good game yep and just for john the uh ghostbusters are coming to planet coaster I don't yeah. know. Are you a, you're, you're a big, big Ghostbusters fan, right? Yeah, no, I'm a huge Ghostbuster fan. I mean, I think the only person who's uh, a bigger Ghostbuster fan than me might be Michael, but that's only because he actually has a Ghostbusters costume. Yeah. I don't. Well, I have a Stay Puft costume, but I don't have, like, an actual Ghostbuster suit with the so proton pack. Fight each other? Stay Puft versus proton pack? No. No? No. You were thinking about reenacting the scene at the end of Ghostbusters where he's, like, climbing up the side of the building, but it's John. He's like, Wah. I hadn't. No. You hadn't thought about doing no, that? I hadn't, I hadn't thought about that. Okay. Uh, the Ghostbusters are in Planet Coaster. Yeah, yeah, they're in Planet Coaster. I don't know anything about Planet Coaster, so, you know. Apparently, at a certain point, uh, ghosts will start invading the Planet Coaster world, and uh, you can get some Ghostbusters in there to stop. There's actually even little Planet Coaster versions of the of the actual Ghostbusters. Yeah, yeah, I did see that. So, um, Which looks cool, you know? Uh, Planet Coaster... Is like City Skylines or like one of those games where I'm just like, hey, this is really cool. Like I didn't even know there was a there's a kit, there's a uh, Night Rider and a Back to the Future pack also available for Planet Coaster, but looks good. Uh, all right, let's do wrap it up with a little bit of uh, announcement news. Dead Island Two is apparently still happening according to I, THQ. You know, I had been wondering about that because it's been silent, radio silent, but every place still claims it's it's still taking orders for it. So yep. That great E3 trailer in, it was like 2014 or something yeah. like that. Uh, that might have been the year that Jason and I went to E3. No. Man. No, I think it was the year after. It was the year after that. Um, so, yeah. THQ uh, Nordic says that Dead Island 2 is still happening. So, I don't know. Put out a trailer or something. Um, Maybe it'll be at E3. Next week, Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons is coming out for the Switch. Hey, there. that's a good game. Uh-huh. Uh, the real reason I, I mentioned it is because uh, because the 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 switch has two joy cons. Yeah, each apparently person gets a... each person you can have actual two play, two people playing it. Yeah, because in the original the whole thing was that each brother was one analog stick. Yeah, and then the shoulder buttons. Right, kind of seems like it would take away a little bit of the game. I feel like that was what made that like the game itself wasn't very difficult, but what was difficult was like trying to control, trying to get your brain to deal with controlling two different. 
characters on the screen at the same time. Yeah. But for anybody who's never played Brothers, I think it's a great game. Yeah. Uh, it's been on my short list as a, a short sequential to maybe do because it's not much more than about three hours long. But, like, it's good. Uh, and then last but not least, a few things for fun. George R. R. Martin, uh, this was mentioned last week, apparently is uh, in between not writing his latest, uh, the last Game of Thrones book. It's also working with, uh, it's, it's, it's assumed it's going to be from software. No, it's actually been confirmed elsewhere. Oh, has it? Um, I think from software themselves confirmed it. Okay. Um, so, yeah, no longer a rumor going to be happening. Yeah, he's... George R. R. Martin is doing something with From Software, so you know. Yeah, but if you're hankering for some George R. R. Martin, uh, you can always play a little Skyrim, and apparently there are a bunch of mods to add Starbucks coffee cups to a variety of tables throughout the world of Skyrim, uh, which I think is a funny thing because there was coffee cup in the Game of Thrones episode. So. There's also a water bottle in the finale. Yeah. Everybody seems so pleased with themselves for finding that. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to answer some questions. So everybody stick around, and we'll see you in a minute. Nope. John, it's time for questions. I'm ready for questions. Damn it. You cut I was going to ask you if you were ready for questions. John, are you ready for questions? No. <laughs> okay, good. Because <laughs> mail at rageselect.com is the email address. It does work now. I had a problem with it last week. I don't think I actually missed any questions because it, it was only down for about an hour because I was changing over my site bullshit. But before we do questions. Before we do questions. Very briefly. Oh. I finished Rage 2 last week. Oh, is it throwing, throwing a... Curveball. Curveball. Yeah. He asked me if I'm ready for questions and then went... John, like, are you ready to review Rage 2? Never played it. Okay. <laughs> uh, so Rage 2, you know, is the latest in what I would consider to be the line of, like, id Software reviving their old properties, right? We got Wolfenstein, we got Doom, we got Quake as a multiplayer thing, and Rage was, like, the last one on the list. And so, you know, last year at E3, they announced Rage 2. Um Rage, the, the the world of Rage 2 is weird. It's like a meteor hit the earth, and so it's kind of the post-apocalypse, but kind of not. I mean, it's like a dusty, barren wasteland, but then there's also, like, jungles and shit, and there's a bunch of mutants with, like, laser strapped to them with little baby arms, and there's, like, underground mutants and stuff like that. And you play as uh, the, the basically the last ranger, um, or at least I, I don't... I never found another ranger when I was playing the game who are these characters with kind of these mech, not mech suits, but these just like exo powered suits that you can get a bunch of superpowers and you have to go out of the wasteland and stop this big, uh, Darth Vader robot looking motherfucker from doing bad shit. The plot is razor thin. Uh, it basically involves a series of about three missions for three different characters that once you're done with those, you can just go into the end game and, and do that. But they pop you into this big open world. There's waypoints all over the map. There are different factions for you to attack. There are these arcs where you can get new powers. And it just, you know, it's okay. Yeah. Like, it's what I, I've said this a bunch of times, it is what I expected Wolfenstein and Doom to be, which was just kind of like cashing in on um, on nostalgia for Doom's old, or for Id's old properties. But was there nostalgia for Rage? No, but it was the only one they had left, right? So they're making Doom Eternal, they made Wolfenstein 2, and they've got Youngblood coming out soon, right? So it was the only other thing they could be cashing in on. And I think it says a lot, the fact that they outsourced it to Avalanche. Now... I personally just, I think Avalanche is like, a, I think they're just kind of a mid-tier company. Like I know, I don't, I don't disagree with that. I know you liked Mad Max a lot. Yeah, no, I did. Uh, but you know what? I feel like when I talk to you about Mad Max, the same thing happened to me with Rage 2, where it's like, I went out and got all the superpowers, and then all I was doing was just driving around this map, just like knocking out outposts yeah. and shooting raiders. And the, the shooting is all very fun, because you've got all these superpowers that you yeah. can use, right? But... Why you're doing it is 
just unimportant. Yeah. The enemies are just all carbon copies. Like there's no, there's there's like four different types of enemies in the game. You know, you got a few different you got the raiders and the mutants and then the authority, which is the big bad guys with the little baby arm guys. You know, there's some kind of bigger kaiju esque type of boss characters that you'll run into every so often. But the moment to moment gameplay, I mean I was sitting here playing it. And I wasn't having the time of my life, but it was something to do. Yeah. And, you know, it was relatively fun. It just, the problem that I have with it is that Doom, in my opinion, was like a masterpiece. And that Wolfenstein really did dig deep on their storyline, right? And kind of giving you different ways to play the game and stuff. Yeah. Uh, and this was just kind of, there. I don't know. I mean, like, well, the th- you know, it's like. You can drive around and you can shoot stuff while you're driving, and that's all well and good, but it's not exactly anything we haven't seen before, you know. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to say something because you know, you, 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 whenever we talk about a game that's by Avalanche, you, you bring up the fact that I really like Mad Max. Yes, I don't know what it is about Mad Max uh-huh. that everything that they do just hit all the right notes for me. Okay. But every other Avalanche game yeah. kind of has been meh to me. Yeah. So I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 yeah, I, I don't want to make John the straw man for all of Avalanche, yeah. right? This is like, not like <laughs> you dislike one game by one company and suddenly everyone thinks you hate every game by said company. Yes. Uh, uh, because the thing is, I mean, like, I really wanted to like Just Cause 3. I really want to like Just Cause 4. I, yeah, I, I can't and get I into just, the Just Cause games. Just couldn't get I into don't it. know why. You know, everything on paper makes it look like something I should really yeah. like. But maybe part of it is the fact that there just isn't like the gameplay itself isn't because I feel like Doom 2016 had a story, but it was not exactly a narrative masterpiece. Yeah. But the gameplay was so compelling that you wanted to keep going through it. Yeah. Wolfenstein had a much better story. Has right? a very compelling story. Very compelling and story. good gameplay. And good gameplay, right? The yeah. moment to moment gameplay is probably weaker than Doom, but it's still very fun. You know, you got the dual wielding. Yeah. Like it's just it's a lot of it reminds me of, you know, when like a when a developer really works hard to make sure that you're having a good time, yeah. right? As opposed to just like, well, here's some guns, here's some superpowers. Like in Rage 2, you know, they've got a machine gun, they've got a shotgun, but then they also have like there's a gun where you shoot people with darts, and then when you hit the the L two button, it shoots a dart, and and the the person you shot flies over to wherever that is, right? Or there's like a um, uh, like a rail gun where if you charge it up, you could shoot through multiple enemies one time. Or there's like a pistol where you shoot guys with it, and then when you hit the other button, it it sets them all on fire. Yeah. But I found myself using the machine gun and the shotgun more than anything because, A, ammo was plentiful for those, which was not plentiful for, like, the rocket launcher or the hyper laser or any of that stuff. And then, you know, you you have one button to switch. And then the other thing was that when it comes to shooting people with the pistol that sets people on fire, that's a kind of a cool gimmick. But what it needed was, like, enemies that were very susceptible to fire damage that were not susceptible to any kind of other damage. So there was a reason to use the fire gun or like, you know, a, a, an enemy where shooting through them, you know, does something like the, their, the weak point is on their back. And if you yeah. use the hyper gun that can shoot through them, then you'll hit their backpack and it'll blow them up in yeah. one shot. Right. But like it was all the machine gun was fine for most of the game. So I just ended up spending a lot of the game, just holding down the machine gun button and killing people like, I think it's the sort of game where if you got it, fr- I mean, again, I think Avalanche works best when they're the kind of games that you can get like free on PlayStation Plus or on a stale for twenty dollars or something. Yeah, I just don't think it, it's a full sixty dollars. Also, oh my god, it was buggy as all fuck. Like, yeah, I've heard that. Just so buggy, like so many audio problems. HUD elements would disappear. Things would just pop in. Um, well, there was the one in the video where, where like, it did the character introduction thing, but it didn't do any of the graphics around it. It just had the guy stand still. Right. Yeah. And you and Matt were just like, the fuck is going on? I think there was a part where I was trying to do some capture or something for it where, like, a character was – an NPC was doing dialogue, and I paused the game for a few seconds. And then, like, the subtitles were the amount of time that I had paused behind where the character was talking. I mean, just a – like it's not a complicated game, and so this amount of bugs seems ridiculous. Yeah, and especially it seems ridiculous because again, and I don't want—I mean, like I, 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 
I don't think that it's completely fair to just judge Rage 2 based on Doom 2016, but on the other hand, yeah. it is kind of part of this family of revived old id games. It's kind of a shame that Rage, one of the most uh, kind of one of the most poo-pooed uh, and forgotten id games, has spawned a sequel, which is like the worst and fastest and most rushed and buggiest and kind of boring of the id revival games right so maybe in that way they've been very true to the franchise maybe they were just like hey you know we made one forgettable did game. it have a vehicle only multiplayer nope <laughs> no it did not i mean the thing is that early on in the game like the arcs so there's like a several factions the, okay let me just briefly before we get into the questions there's stuff in this game that i don't even understand why it's a problem there are a lot of levels where you have to go underground and clear out mutant nests right and you should have a flashlight and there's no flashlight. So it's just like it's super dark and you can't see anything. And it's like every game has a flashlight. What, a, what are you talking about? What do you mean you don't have a flashlight? Or like there's this element that you get in the game called Feltrite, which you use to upgrade your guns and your superpowers, right? But like I got to the end of the game and I had upgraded everything as far as I could go. However, I still needed these this separate materials to upgrade like my guns, so I needed to buy gun upgrade packs from vendors. So I needed money for that. But there was no way for me to sell the Feltrite that I had in order to get money. So it was like I'm running around the map clearing out the rest of the stuff. I've got 50000 of this currency that's just worthless at this point, And there's no way for me to trade it in and get something that I could actually use for it. It just seemed like – you know how in Saints Row 4, Saints Row 4 is like – Hey, this game is fun. Like, we don't care if it's broken. It's just fun, right? You just do whatever the fuck you want to. Like, yeah. we know the enemies aren't going to kill you. We know that you're not going to have a much of a challenge playing this game. But look at all this crazy shit you can do. Isn't this fun? Whereas this game, like, every time I wanted to have fun with it, I felt like I had to, to work around something natural that the game developers put in the game. And it just, it, I don't know. It, it's not a bad game. It's just, it's definitely not going in the same tier as... Wolfenstein and, yeah. and Quake. I get that. So seems to be the the general consensus. Yeah, and I agree. I agree. Uh, all right, questions. Uh, Music Mondays writes in and says, "Dear Jeff and John, so right off the bat, I haven't seen this season of Game of Thrones, but the internet has made sure uh, has made sure how divisive they feel about the ending has made clear. I guess how divisive they feel about the ending. In between the lines, this made me think about the writers of the show and the Lost series." The reason why is because this feels like the same complaining I heard when Lost ended, uh, where everybody respectively shit on uh, since you saw fans feel like uh, things felt rushed to get to the ending. When I see that, I think about the writers behind the series, not what they were thinking now, but if that ending of the show will be good enough for them to find other shows to work on down the road, if ending a series certain ways turns into a negative effect, uh, that could give a writer bad reputation. So my question is, has there been a series from uh, any medium that sounds good at first, but because of the creator slash writer slash showrunners slash history, you refuse to give it a chance? Hope this question made sense, and I hope you guys like the miniatures you got, and that's from Music Mondays. Yes, he sent me a bunch of little Gundams and Kamen Riders, and I gave Matt all the Kamen Riders because Matt likes Kamen Rider, and I like Gundam, so... Yeah, I think a few of those were actually supposed to go to me, by the way. Were they? Yeah. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'll get Matt to bring some of them back. No, it's okay. Because, <laughs> um, um, yeah, did Michael give them to you or bring them over to you or whatever? Yes. Yeah, a few of those were supposed to go to me. Damn it. Well, you can have any of the Gundams that you want. No, it's all you, right. you take your pick of the Gundams. It's okay. Uh, uh, but, yeah, no. Um, well, first off, it should be noted that, that Benahoff and Weiss rushed. I mean, I think it's pretty clear knowledge that, they, like, HBO has said that they were willing to give them more episodes if they wanted them, and they seem to kind of just be in a hurry to finish it up. And a lot of people have postulated that that's because they are going to be writing the next Star Wars yeah, arc. That's possible. Uh, and it seems like uh, that it seems plausible, right? It yeah. doesn't seem implausible. Um, as far as a show, what do you think? Sounds good at first, but because the creator, writer, showrunner history, you refuse to give it a chance. Um, anything that was done by the guy who directed the first season of uh, uh, Iron Fist, 
Okay. <laughs> because he also went on to direct Inhumans. He also directed like one of the worst seasons of Dexter. Ah. Like every series that he becomes the showrunner on, yeah. it's the worst version of worst season of that series. And like I've literally just said fuck that guy. If I see like I didn't even bother with Inhumans because I was like, well, he's going to ruin that. Um there's not a lot that I won't at least give a chance, but uh Lindelof really I do really? I don't like that guy. I like Damon Lindelof. I do not I don't like know. that guy. I, I, like I look at man, I'm looking at that Watchmen show fucking askance, man. I have given that show the side eye because I'm just like oh just talk to Grant, he's got a podcast about it. Yeah, I know. I know. He's invited me to like it on Facebook. I don't use Facebook anymore. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't uh, like it either. But I, I mean, like, I, I don't know. I just haven't been a fan of Lindelof stuff. I mean, yeah. let's, let's. I do appreciate what he's doing. Yeah, with I the have show. No idea what he's doing. Uh, he's not show. adapting Watchmen. Yeah, it takes place in modern times in the watch the world of Watchmen. Mm-hmm. So, Watchmen the book happened, and I think he's doing the book and not the movie. But Watchmen the book happened, and. Time has gone on. Yes. And this is what that world looks like now. Okay. Um, and I'm kind of interested in that. Like, I'm kind of, I'm, I, I, I'm mildly interested. Like, I'm not so interested that I'm going to, like, go watch it. Yeah. Go out of my way to watch it. But I'm mildly interested that if it starts getting good reviews, I might check it out when it comes out on Blu-ray or whatever. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, the last one of his, I think, was The Leftovers. Yeah. And, I and that I, show was pretty good. And I tried watching a couple episodes of The Leftovers, and I was like, I, again, it's one of those things where... This may be a good show, but like I'm not, I'm not in the mood for fucking misery porn and every this show yeah. is just so like ugh. I mean everything is just so miserable in this show. The first episode ends with fucking Justin Theroux shooting a bunch of dogs, I think, and I was just like, I don't need to watch this. Yeah. This isn't for me. He also Prometheus, you know. But he also wasn't the only person who wrote that script. That is true. That is true, but he was also on Lost, and I didn't like Lost, so, I mean, I stopped watching I, Lost in I season two. I love Lost, but I actually blame a lot of the problems with Lost on J.J. Uh, Abrams and his sure. fucking mystery boxes. Yeah, I, and I can see that as well. I, I mean, like, the thing is that there's nobody where I'm just like, nah, brah. Um, like, if, if everybody tells me that Watchmen is really good, I might eventually get around to watching Watchmen. And by everyone, you mean people other than Grant. Yes, Yes. Grant fucking loves Lindelof. I know. Yes. So, and I take that into account when he tells me things about David Lindelof shows. Um, you know, I, I, it was funny that ter- in the Terminator, the new Terminator thing, the yeah. dark whatever. I think Goyer is in there. Yeah, uh, David Goyer had his hand on the script, which is a little, you know. But see, the thing is that I feel like that may be the sort of thing that David Goyer. Maybe I want him there. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I don't think I want Damon Go- D- David Goyer anywhere near my superheroes. Superheroes, but because the guy doesn't understand superheroes, he doesn't like them. <laughs> so, uh, um, you know, the thing is that I'm not a big Snyder fan either, um, and I wasn't. I haven't been. Like Dawn of the Dead is not my favorite zombie thing of all time yeah. and his version of dawn of the dead was not terrible it was, it was, it was all right it was okay it's good uh but i didn't like watchmen very much uh i didn't hate it but again watchmen 300 and i'll even go as far as to say man of steel uh-huh all have while while my initial viewing opinion of them is all at different levels. Yeah, they all have had the what I refer to as the Snyder effect, which is I watch it the first time and I'm like, you know what, I didn't hate that. That right. was or or I fucking love that or yeah, that was badass. Give it some time, watch it a second time. That was good. It's all right. Mm-hmm. Give it some time, maybe watch it a third time. You know, it wasn't as good as I remembered it, but it wasn't bad. But I don't know. And then watch it again a little bit later. It's kind of garbage. Like each subsequent watching, I hate the. I start liking the movie less and less to the point of that I hate the movie, which is why I actually haven't gone back and watched Watchmen since I bought the Blu-ray. Yeah, like I've literally just like never. Wa- I watched that Blu-ray once and went. Eh, I still like it. it. Wasn't bad. Never watched it again because I know every time I watch a Zack Snyder flick, every time I watch it, I hate the movie more. Yeah, I I I. You know what? Watchmen may be a fine movie. I can't get over the way that they changed the ending. I know that 
it probably wouldn't have worked with the big monster like in the book. It probably would have. It, but... it, they could have made it work. It just didn't make any sense to me that like what the, your U.S. military super guy is the reason the entire world is going to come together from the. But see, the, uh, Watchmen also goes back to this whole thing about like I don't think that a lot of those stories around that time were written for a time. Like the Watchmen yeah. was written about like a, a lot of Cold War nuclear paranoia yeah. and that without the Cold War nuclear paranoia to kind of enhance the story that it doesn't have as big of an impact. The same I think is true of V for Vendetta that was made as like this weird continuation of Margaret Thatcher's policies like that that was written that was Alan Moore writing in response to what he saw going on around him and that I don't know that it works in a vacuum if you don't understand like I mean it, it works sort of but I just don't think it has as much of an impact the same is true of um what's the Batman that everybody likes uh the, the Batman Begins no, and the Dark Knight Dark Knight Returns yeah uh, oh uh or Frank Miller's Dark Knight? Frank, Frank Miller's Dark Knight Returns yeah where that was yeah. like I mean a lot of that was was very rooted in the 80s. I mean, Ronald yeah. Reagan's a character in there. Like, street gangs are a really big part of The Dark Knight Returns, and that was back in the 80s when we were all really scared of street gangs. So, like, is The Dark Knight Returns the sort of thing that's a, as good a story now as it was when it came out? Like, understanding it as a seminal, like, work in video games and as a turning point from the, what, Silver Age into the Dark Age or Black Age or whatever they called the... The kind of Modern 80s age. gritty deconstruction superhero stuff. Like, it's very important for that, but it's just like, I just don't know. A lot of times these things get held up, and I don't know if they need to. And for Watchmen, I loved Watchmen. Watchmen was the reason I started reading comics. I like, read comic books when I was younger, stopped, and then I told the story when I worked at Dell. Chris yeah. Robertson, for my birthday, got me the Watchmen trade paperback yeah. and was like, you need to read this. And I was Watchmen like, was one of those books that I didn't read for the longest time. Yeah. Um, and I actually was worried because one of because it it's we've talked about it on the show we talked about it on live streams. sure I don't like Frank Miller's Batman yeah I don't I don't like the way he writes Batman I especially don't like the way he writes Superman which is really fucking weird to me that DC is giving him a Superman book soon um, but uh, I just don't like Frank Miller's Batman I can't, I don't like Dark Knight Returns I don't like Dark Knight Strike Backs I think All Star Batman is comical at best What about Year One uh, Year One I have less of an issue with I think Year One's okay I think that's yeah, probably the it's, better it's of his It's pretty subdued Yeah And I actually I have less of an issue with that Like yeah. I actually read it as like Ah it's alright It's 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 fine um, But Dark Knight Returns I have like fundamental issues with Sure And I had friends that were like John you gotta read Dark Knight Returns Before I'd ever read it Right Like you gotta read This, is, this will fucking change your life As far as comics go It is the most influential I read it and I was like That was fucking garbage like, I literally was like, that was garbage. And they're like, well, then you have no good taste in comics. It's like, no, no, no. Here's why I'm saying it's garbage. Here's why I don't like it. Sure. Here's why I think it's 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 not. I get why it's influential. Mm -hmm. And I understand that. But as for my take on Batman or whatever, yeah. this is not Batman. This is Frank Miller jizzing all over the cover comic and saying, hey, here it is. It's Sin City that happens to have Batman in it. Yeah, you know, exactly. Uh, it's a um, uh, hard-boiled And I was Batman. really worried that Watchmen was going to be the same thing. Yeah. Now, luckily, I think Watchmen does... As a I, comic, I, I feel like it's accentuated with knowing if you're if you're it from that era or, or, or around that time, or at least understand the the the, it, it, the period it, it was made. But I do feel like it is a good book, which is actually when when I learned the difference between Frank Miller and Alan, Alan Moore, Moore uh, which is you know. Alan Moore is Frank Miller is crazy and bad. And Alan Moore is crazy and good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is that Alan Moore can write? Yeah. So like, I'll read a thing that Alan Moore writes because Alan Moore, you know, Alan Moore Swamp thing is fucking. Some of his later stuff or his more modern stuff is yes. a little weird. I, there was time. I mean, they were all better in the eighties. You know, uh, yeah. when they were all just fucking doing drugs. After he did stuff, what but... is it, Lost Girls or whatever? Oh yeah, yeah. After that, he kind of went weird. into this weird, like his Neo Nomicon or book fucking. So I stopped gets reading raped by a fish before that. Yeah, at some point in it. Also, I just like reading the drama between him and Grant Morrison. That's my favorite thing. <laughs> um. One more for the stack. I don't like Darren. Ar well, I, I have very mixed feelings about Darren Aronofsky. Uh, he's the guy that did Pi. I like Darren Aronofsky, but I, that's just me. Yeah, I do, I do not. And it's because I think 
like with I you, think he's pretentious, but yeah, but yeah. So like with you, everybody kept telling me how Pi was amazing and, and wonderful, and I watched it. and I was just like, I think this movie's stupid. I think this yeah. movie's stupid. And then I watched Requiem for a Dream, and as somebody who does drugs, I was like, I think this movie's stupid. Oh yeah, too. I didn't like I didn't like Requiem for uh, a Dream. And then I watched. Uh, the, the fountain. I love the fountain. And I was like, "This is okay, but it's a bit masturbatory." I never have seen the wrestler. The I've never seen the wrestler. Uh, I like the wrestler. I did see Black Swan though. Never saw that, and I did like it. And then I watched Mother last year, and I like that as well. So, like, I don't know. Maybe I'm just getting pretentious in my old age. But there was a time where if you would ask me this question, the first thing out of my mouth would have been Darren Aronofsky because Pie and Requiem and. And the fountain, and it's just like, oh my god, the people just telling me how fucking brilliant this guy is, and I'm well, like, really? I mean, for the fountain, the thing that uh, the thing that made me love that movie so much is I love the graphic novel. Yeah, which I don't know if you know the story behind that. Nope. Um, so he wrote the fountain as a script. Yeah, and no one would would take it. Like he would submit it, and it just get you know turned down all over Hollywood. Couldn't get any place to make it. Sure. So he basically had a friend who was an artist who was like, well, we should, I want to make a comic. Like, I, I want to do a comic. He's a painter. And he was, and, and he was like, well, here, you take the script for this movie. It's never going to get made because every studio has turned it down. Right. And then it got released as a, as a graphic novel. And then studios wanted to buy it. <laughs> okay. That, that, um, that makes a certain amount of sense. I think yeah. it would probably work better as a comic, uh, yeah. to be honest, but. I don't know. I, I mean, it, I wouldn't say it's like the greatest comic ever made or anything like that, but I really enjoyed it. Like I the really thing is that it. I'm so uh, again, I am I'm very torn on the fountain because the the thing is that I spent years with people trying to shove these Darren Aronofsky movies into my face I get that. as if they were brilliant. And I'm like, I don't like them, and it, and it, it was it, it's that fucking thing. That, I mean, it was even before the internet where you know your friends are just like, what? What? No, but why? Tell, justify you, the, the movie you didn't like. Oh, no, <laughs> I still have a friend that every time he sees me, he tells me I have to justify my dislike of uh, ba- Dark Knight uh, Returns. I like what you like, don't like what you don't like. Yeah. Sam C. writes in and says, Hey, Rage Select crew, how's it going? While I know that most of you are not as invested in Game of Thrones as the rest of the world, one... Like Game of Thrones questions. Uh, yeah, well, I think these are the only two. One thing you may have heard over the last few weeks is that uh, of the negative reception of the last few episodes received. And while I can admit that this season has its faults with its writing, I can't deny that it constantly surprised me, for better or for worse, uh, had amazing direction, and continued to have flawless acting from the cast. However, it's certainly hard to retain these views when everyone and their mothers wants to burn the show at the stake. My question to you, uh, too, is what games, films, TV shows, comics, etc., that got almost universal hatred for their ending, did you honestly not mind as much? Uh, thanks again for reading this out. Hope you guys are getting through some of that Texas heat. Okay. Long time listener, Sam C from the UK. So mo- first off, I'd like to say the Texas heat hasn't been that bad because we had some tornadoes and some rain and uh, I thought it was going to rain all week this week. Yeah. But not- I got rained on. I got rained on on Tuesday. Is it a brief rain? Yeah. A little summer shower. Well, it's funny cause I got rained on and then I got into work and then like an hour after I got into work, it started pouring hard. Um, what day was this Tuesday? Oh, I was was it before three o'clock in the yeah. afternoon? No, yeah, it was way before that. <laughs> it was, this was this was like at at, at like uh, ten a.m. Okay, yeah, I wasn't. Yeah. Remember, I, I work mornings. No, no, so I know, I, I know. That, well, that's what I figured. That's what I was trying yeah. to specify. Um, um, and then like, and then literally at the end of the day, it was all bright and sunny. Um, but no, uh, things that everybody hated that you didn't lost. Mind. I, okay. I, I I actually enjoyed the ending of Lost. Like I I I. Still, like again, I don't know if I've said it on this podcast or not, but I remember posting that I liked the ending to look like when the ending happened. I was like, you know what? That felt like a fitting ending. I thought it was great. I really liked it. I had friends that literally, or people that came on my wall that I were friends that like started like fuck you. How can you like that garbage? You're a piece of shit for liking it. Mm-hmm. Like just so like spitting vitriol and anger to the point of that I was like, yeah, I'm going to unfriend you on Facebook because I know I don't ever see you in person. So yeah. we're no longer friends. Have a nice day. Um, I mean, it, it's obviously Game of Thrones. I didn't have any problem with Game of Thrones. I was like, I was okay. I mean, you know, yeah. I didn't I didn't hate it. Um, I'm trying to think of endings of uh, TV shows, comics, etc. that got almost universal hatred. What what else does the internet really really hate? 
the ending of. So I, I mean, when I think of endings of shows, endings of movies, uh, like I'm, I'm trying to think of the things that people really dislike. I mean, like you know, there's like, like the end of Sopranos, but I didn't watch. I mean, I watched like three seasons of Sopranos. Mm. Um, I am watched the Sopranos. Let's see. Let's let's do an internet search. Maybe we can find a few answers. To this yeah, question. I mean, I don't. I didn't like most most shows that have endings. Um, I don't really know of a lot. I mean, most people don't really like. Like, I I can't think of shows that actually had like legit endings that people like universally hated or anything. Yeah. Like, I know people thought the Quantum Leap ending was weird, which I watched and I was like, yeah, that is a little weird, but actually, it fit, it fits with the show. Um, you know, uh. Overfield, Lane, oh. Titanic. What, what are you looking at? A, a list from Looper.com. Controversial movie endings. Um, uh, Dark Knight. Oh, I thought we were talking just strictly about TV shows. Uh, he said in this question, games, films, TV shows, oh, comics, okay, etc. Okay. So I'm just trying to think of, of anything that kind of fits in I, that position. Another thing. I didn't hate as much the ending to uh, Far Cry 5. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I did, so I can't. <laughs> yeah, like, I didn't hate it as much as everyone else seems to. Yeah. Um, but then, like, I felt like I either somehow imagined something or witnessed something that no one else caught. Yeah. Because the ending made sense to mm. me. Because, like... I even like called it like like oh I bet something like this is going to happen at, towards the end because of this this and this and man I was like oh huh. and then like it happens like oh wow it was right and then like everyone I talked to was like that never happened in the game mm-hmm. I don't know what you're talking about and I was like but it it was telegraphed do I think it's a do I thought think it was like the best ending for the game no but I didn't hate it like uh but I didn't have as much problem with it as everyone else. Well, it was what you, I think you told me about this where there was yeah. like radio. Record, yeah, there's like recordings in like, there's a scene where you're going through a, there's a level where you're going through a missile, missile silo. Right. And the, the, the computer system is talking about like the, the, the missile silos. Like there's a voiceover, like recording of like the computer. And it's talking about how there are silos that are missing nuclear weapons right there's 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 mi- missiles nuclear missiles missing from the silo yeah and i honestly thought that the ending of the game was going to be you having to confront him to stop the bombs from exploding yeah and then it turned out that's not exactly what it was um but they were used in some way the one i mean i guess i the thing i always come down to like oh, i remember i was talking about that when it came out is that like that was one of those things where they wanted you to stand there and listen to a recording, right? Like, I don't think that... I mean, I was moving. Um, I, but... I I swear to God, I feel like most of the games that I played that have those recordings, that you set them to play, and then when you get oh, too no, this far was, away, this that they just go away. This wasn't even a thing away. that you set to play. This was just something that was playing while you were oh. overhead, like okay. on, over like an intercom system, okay. like in the bunker. Like, it was just... You know, I the the problem with stuff like that is like if you if that's your story, that's one of the problems I have with Far Cry Five is that if they had if they telegraphed that explicitly, because as I understand, there are there are actually plenty of places where if you listen to the radio, yeah, no, yeah. I, in the car, you know that there are some notes in some of the bunkers and yeah. stuff like that. Well, that all kind of do that, but I needed like a full on cut scene that had With some indication yeah, of yeah. this also, is happening. I, I agree that, you know, that the the ending is a little shitty, but like I said, I had less of an issue with it as most people did. Um, but, uh, you know, I know uh, a lot of people hated the ending to Mass Effect, and I thought it was kind of... I understood the hate for that, but I didn't hate it. I don't think I hated that as much. Like, I didn't like it, but I don't think I hated it as much as everyone else. Yeah. Like, because there were people that were like spewing vitriol over the ending of mass effect and like i just was like i don't guys it's a game i didn't well see i didn't like it until they put in the dlc yeah uh and i think that uh i'll I'll stand by that that it it kind of again it kind of came out of nowhere and uh like and i this is rehashing old stuff but like you know in, in, in mass effect 2 there was all this like dark matter stuff that they were foreshadowing yeah. like they were foreshadowing something else and then suddenly it was just like nope it's yeah. this other thing but and it's the funny like, thing is like people found like in mass effect one there were codex entries that actually referenced the the light child yeah um in that 
like there was like actual like codex injuries that if you actually read that reference seeing a child made of light in the citadel so like it so who knows yeah maybe you know there was more to it I, and i almost assuredly think there was more to that ending originally planned like there was it was supposed to be much more grandiose than it actually ended up being right um but, yeah, yeah i don't know i the thing is that once they put in what uh, the other thing is that um to me okay leviathan added some foreshadowing for what was going to happen at yeah. the end of it and then the citadel dlc lets you have that big party with everybody yeah which felt a, a little bit better wrapping up right yeah. let's have one big blowout with all these characters that i've been with instead of just like all right let's just jump into the end of this game yeah. so no i agree i agree I don't know. I, I'm, I'm looking through all these lists. I'm just not a... I don't know. There's a lot of these where... The problem, I guess, like what I get into is that... Um, I just don't know what people are as mad about when it comes to endings. Yeah. I'm more upset at shows that don't have endings. That just yeah. ended without... Like, they got cut up. They got... They didn't get the chance to end. So, whenever a show has the chance to end, even if it feels rushed, I'm okay with it. Or like a lot of when I was looking through this list of TV show endings, it was like, well, there are none of these that I, I, I like in spite of the fact that everybody hates them. Like you know the How I Met Your Mother ending, but I'm on board with everybody else with How I Met Your Mother. I'm like, I think the ending was stupid and I didn't like it. So, you know, I don't know. But I choose not to dwell on that and just think about stuff that I do like. So, oh, uh, let's see. Let's take some Discord questions. Uh, There's some long ones in there. There are a few. Uh, let's see. Chelly writes in and says, Dear Jeff and John, couldn't stop myself from writing in on the 300th podcast or 301st since I'm always late to things. Uh, anyways, I've been wanting to get a comic of mine off the ground for almost two years now. But writing a ton and slowly getting closer to the actual art stage of things only to find that now I'm getting cold feet. Usual feeling of self-doubt and oh God, what if, I, what if it doesn't make it? I'll have done all this for nothing. My question is this. As a creator, have you ever gotten that, oh, God, am I really about to do this feeling before starting a new endeavor, be it Rage Select or some past project? If so, do you have any advice on how to overcome it? Uh, any advice on web site hosting would be appreciated as well. Uh, anything whatsoever. Longtime fan. Uh, and then we have a PS about being a puppet, but we'll skip that because it's a long question. So I think I can say, yes, I've had that feeling all the time. Um, like even to this day, like mm -hmm. there's stuff that, uh, all the time, uh, the only thing I can say, and it's probably the most, um, it's, it's going to be the, the most answer that you're going to groan at hearing, but it's also kind of the most true. Mm -hmm. Just do it. Like, it, just, just do it. Like it's, it it's like everybody who's who is has ever succeeded at all that stuff it's because they just went and fucking did it mm -hmm. and i i'm when i did geek bombast mm -hmm. i was scared shitless about all that stuff but i just said fuck it and did it like literally i was like i don't have we don't have the equipment we don't have the microphones literally the first episode is was a little uh radio shack fucking microphone piece of shit sitting in a mason jar in the center of a table yeah. while we talked at it um it, the audio sounded like garbage uh it was it was the wor it literally the worst thing you could hear um why a mason jar cuz that was all we had we didn't have a mic stand oh but it was it was sitting on top of a mason jar. Well, it was sitting inside of it so that it was because it was a it was a omnidirectional mic. Oh, okay, okay, no, 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 I get it now, I get it now, I get it now. So it was kind it's of a, no. When you, when you first said it, I thought that you like put a jar over your microphone. No, 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 like, no, no, like no. Shit. Sat no. inside the microphone. Okay, no, I so got that it. it's yep. standing straight up. Yep, yep, yep. I got um, it. Um, and then we talked down towards it, like all kind of like leaned in and talked towards it. Sure. Um, but it literally. And it was like, oh, this is never going to work. Even with that, I was like, oh, my God, this no one's going to want to listen to this. This is, this is terrible. This is, this is horrible. This is going to be the most garbage. But I just kept doing it because I was like, you know what? If I keep doing it, it's going to get better. Mm -hmm. It can only get better. Sure. Um, you know, as far as like what you're talking about releasing a comic, you know, um, like I said, I, I, I wish I had like some type of like profound advice but for i mean maybe jeff here does but for me it's just like you have those fears everyone has those fears just just keep those fears because those fears will keep you from doing something stupid maybe but just do it go look up the original one punch man web comic yeah <laughs> <laughs> if that doesn't inspire you to release it 
to put to put something together regardless of the way that it looks. I don't know what will because the you know one didn't know jack shit about how to draw, and he just wrote drew this this comic and it's real funky looking. But uh, I mean, like yeah, th- that is pretty much the only advice that somebody can give you. I mean, there is no magic formula to remove your fears. It's basically just doing it. Um, the one thing that I say is do something poorly, do some part of your project poorly. Uh, because it's easier to continue work than it is to start work. Starting work is very difficult uh, yeah. is, is because you're making a commitment. But if you, you just start putting lines on a page, right, you can always go back and be like, well, this isn't good enough. I need to redo this. But I do have this part that's done, and this part came out pretty well or whatever. Then doing something will get you going. Remember the, the – um, a body at rest tends to stay at rest. A body in motion tends to stay in yeah. motion. If you start working, you will generally continue working um, if it's something that you're into. So I recommend doing anything, like literally anything, like even if it's if you're trying to draw and you're just putting your pencil on the piece of paper and moving it around in a weird way and then you're like, hey, wait a minute, blah, 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 right? Or doing something very quickly because – it, the hardest thing is to get started. Um, also, remember, uh, quote, unquote, uh, oh, God, what if it doesn't make it? I'll have done all this for nothing. Of course you will not have done all this for nothing. One, practice, 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 yeah. practice. You know, the definition of insanity is not doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. That's practice. You do the same thing over and over and you get better and better at it. You What is it? 10,000 hours and anything makes you uh, a master, right? Yeah. They've said that if you just do the same thing for 10,000 hours – you will get better at it. Like it's almost impossible for you not to get better at it. Yeah. So, and not only that, but I'm a real big believer in the whole, like, Hey, you figured out, you didn't fail. You figured out one thing that didn't work. Right. So yeah. you make, say you make your whole comic and you read it and you give it to somebody else and they read it and they say, this is good. I like it. Or if they say, well, here's some problems, then you'll, you'll know. But also, when you, if you have those kind of feelings, I'm a really big believer. I was actually talking to somebody whose name shall not be mentioned, but earlier this week about like, don't judge your like. Yes, you need to have judgment in your work, but do not be the sole judge of whether or not your work is good enough for anybody yeah. to see. Give it to somebody else. Give yeah. it to a friend and let them read it. Because chances are that all that shit that you're super focused on. They're not seeing it. Yep. They're seeing your intention. You know, it's like, um, uh, you know, when you look in the mirror at your own face and all you see are the things that are wrong with your face, right? Not me, because I, I think I'm perfect. Okay, well, there you go. Well, when I look in the mirror, I always zone in on a lot of the things that are wrong, you know, like, ah, uh, you know, this blah, 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 blah. Uh, but a lot of times when other people look at you, they're not, they're not zoning in on the things that are wrong because they're not as familiar with your face. They're just like, oh, yeah, good looking, good looking person, right? And the same is true the opposite way around is that same person looks in the mirror and they get hyper focused. So don't let your own hyper focus stop you from showing it to somebody that you trust and then listen to them. That if they say, if they say it was good, great. If they say it was bad, talk about why. Like, not the internet, but like somebody you trust who is a friend of yours, yes. you know? Yeah. Someone who you can trust for that, especially if you're doing something like this to make a comic to actually have printed and sold in some, you know, in some form or another, mm-hmm. um, you know, definitely don't just, you know, unless you're doing, you know, doing a web comic and you want to put it out online, which is perfectly fine. Uh, oh, I mean, comics I- are great. Um, but you know, uh, and, and web comics can be a bunch of different things. Uh, but you know, it's, it's one of those things. Definitely show it to someone you trust first, have them give you their valid opinion and, and you know, but I'm the big thing is do it and just do the best you can at it. If you're done with it and you're happy with it, that's really all that matters in my opinion for me. Um, if you're not happy with it, you know, maybe put it out anyways. And then the next time you try something similar and then you can move on to something else and then you'll be better at that thing. Don't let, and then don't let the quest for perfection stop you from putting out. Yeah. And then you, you, you do the best on that thing. And then when people look at that first thing, they're like, well, that wasn't really that good. But then they look at the second thing like, well, that was better. And then you could do another thing. And then it's like, Oh, well this is even better. And then you become, you know, someone who people are like, Oh, he's really fucking great. He had some Rocky start, but you know, a lot of his current stuff, man, that stuff is good. Everybody's got to start somewhere. 
And you can, if you apply yourself to a thing, you can get better at a thing, whether it's playing the guitar, doing acrobatics, cooking, uh, drawing a picture, you know, whatever it is, whatever the thing is, like, uh, you know, you can get better at it. You just have to do it. Like, yeah. and, and the thing is that you will not get better at it if you do not do it. So you must do it, and then you get better at it, yeah. as opposed to not doing it and not getting any better at it. Yeah. Uh, let's see. IT Johan writes in and says, hello, Jeff and John. Uh, as someone who loves the feel of a book in my hand but finds it cumbersome to take it with me, I usually have to buy uh, them digitally for easy reading on my phone. I would love uh, – uh, let's see. I would love the, uh, to – I would love books that would follow me – follow um, – Sorry, I'm trying to interpret in real time. It's not really coming out right. I would love, I'm just going to read it. I would love that books follow the route of many comics so you can get them digitally when you buy it physical. What about you guys? Are you content with just digital or would you like to buy it physical and then get it digital if you have space for it? Kind regards, IT Johan. I feel like you and I are on opposite sides of this particular coin. John Sitton. Probably. I do not want things. I, I love my kindle i don't read comics which would be a different proposition yeah. so i think for books i prefer like the physical page mm-hmm. like for comic books for novels i i like to have something in my hand also i find reading on paper to be easier than reading on a screen um and that goes for comics and but i'll I'll read comics digitally i actually do read comics digitally a lot yeah um i actually read both a good mix of both physical and digital um but you know it, it's also one of those things where i think for like video games kind of prefer to have them digitally weirdly enough hmm. um just because i don't want to have to like stick a disc in and then take it out and swap in another disc and take it out and swap in another disc. It also starts to get to a point where you have so many of them that you're just like, Jesus Christ, I don't need yeah. another box. I've got I've got so yeah. many boxes of games. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. But yeah, as far as like comics and stuff, I like having a physical book that can sit on my shelf that I can loan out to people. I mean, it's the same thing you've talked about, have, like having a physical copy of a game that you can loan out to people. Yep. I have a book that can be like, oh man, hey Jeff, you really need to read this book. I borrow my copy of it, have fun, you know, and let me know what you think. Sure. You know, uh, I like, I like that. Um, uh, you know, so it's, but I, I, I don't hate digital as much as everybody else. Cause I do think that digital is a valid format. Um, I just don't like reading like novels digitally. Well, I, let me be very clear here. Like when I read, I don't read on my phone. Like if I didn't have an e-reader, then I wouldn't do that. I would still prefer digital. But like the way that e-ink pages look yeah. is that they're just like it just looks like a piece of plastic that has words printed on it. So and the backlight on a Kindle Paperwhite comes from the edges of the screen. Like it's not shining in your face; it's shining from the edges of the screen inward to light up the page. Mm-hmm. And so the whole thing is designed to be like. Easy on your eyes, easy to read. It's got a really fast refresh rate of going from next page to next page. And if it wasn't for that, like I actually, there were times when I would have, uh, when I would read stuff on my phone, but only as a last resort. But, you know, considering the fact that I work at home and I'm here all the time, I just read stuff on my Kindle Paperwhite. And that, like, I I honestly feel like people should give e-ink, that there there should be more tech work into making e-ink work the problem with it is it doesn't have a good refresh rate because it's literally moving ink up and down instead of lighting up a pixel right yeah. you light a pixel at the speed of electricity but you actually physically have to move like fluid up or down in these little balls in order to make e-ink work um and that's and so the reason that i like that though is because i don't want to wait to get the next book in the franchise I read a lot these yeah. days, and so I don't want to have to go – like if I had – if I was um, if I was buying physical books, I'd have the same problem with physical books that I have with yeah. games, right? Is that I would just have – I just have shelves full of freaking digital books or full of – Physical books. books. Physical books, yeah. So um, I don't know. I mean I, I like I like digital better. I mean I know that it, you know there's an archival – issue and there's a whole kind of like if the internet slash power goes out then i won't be able to use any of these but you know the kindle paperwhite you charge it up and it lasts for like i mean it gives you something like 
25 hours worth of reading before you have to plug it back in again because it's not continually lighting a screen because the magnetism that makes the e-ink go up and down like when you're not when you're not like turning the page it's not using any power so it's an yeah. extremely low power device like i love it so much it's light it's simple you don't have to charge it very often it's got all my books on it yeah. and it sits in my pocket so uh let's see lucifer md writes in uh hello sweet sweet john and jeff uh i just watched john wick 3 i enjoyed it and i was thinking what is the closest game to john wick I'm kind of ignoring the John Wick promo DLCs in the VR game. I remember hearing it was not great. I'm trying to think of something that challenges reflexes and or makes you feel like a John Wick level badass. Maybe a Sekiro style gun kata game challenging the technical skills makes you work and get better until you feel the pride of burning through thumbsticks. Thanks for my essay. Uh, with love, the slowest gun in the West. And also rise PS. Do you remember that game wet with Eliza Dushku? It was a fun grindhouse game. I wish we'd get a PC port so I could buy it off of steam during some sale and play an hour and then forget about it for another 10 years. I do remember what I remember what too. Yeah. It wasn't a bad game. Um, but as far as, uh, the John wick game, I, I mean, I don't know. There is, I mean, like the thing is that the level of challenge that you're asking for, or like a Sekiro style thing. Yeah, I mean the the closest things that I can think of the John Wick games are like uh, are like uh, Max Payne. That's exactly or, what I was gonna say. Or Super Hot. Uh, su- yeah, Super Hot would do it. Yeah. Super Hot would definitely do it. Whether the regular version or the VR version. <laughs> More the VR version if you could do that. But yeah, um, yeah, Super Hot, uh, Max Payne. The you know the problem is just when we look through John our- Wu Stranglehold. Yeah, that is actually pretty close. Um, I mean, like, there's a case to be made about, and this is so weird, about Bulletstorm just because it's the killing with skill thing that has you doing stylish kills. I don't think, though, that what you're describing exists, like a third-person, super hard... uh, Hotline Miami, maybe? You know? Yeah, maybe. uh, To kind of shoot twice throw a gun at somebody you know kind of punch him in the face uh how am i how am i me too um stranglehold is probably the closest thing that exists i'm just trying to think because most gun most games with guns are first person so third yeah. be a third person action game that has i mean some- stranglehold is just max Payne with john Woo. <laughs> yeah but it's got all those weird other things where you can like there's like the context sensitive actions that you can do, like the crazy yeah. John Woo style flipping around. Um, the the old Punisher game might fall yeah, in that category yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, a um, little bit, a little bit. I'm trying to think. You know what might what might work? Uh, even though I don't think that you could. Uh, I don't know if it's even available anywhere anymore. I know that Punisher game is barely available because I want to play I own it one day. It. Yeah, but it's on like the Xbox. Um, farts. I just had it. I just lost it. Uh, oh, Dead to Rights. Okay, with the dog. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Yeah, I remember might, that. Might kind of work. You know, I remember yeah. liking that. Uh, the Wanted game. Yeah, might kind of work. You know, you kinda, got a lot of, yeah, kind of yeah. crazy gunplay going on in there. I think that's about all my brain is able to yeah. squeeze out. I wanted to say the true crime uh, game or even, uh, um, but it's not true. Crime's not the game. I'm th- it is not a good one, but even uh, what is a, what was the, the like sleeping dogs? Uh, but no, that's more of a GTA style yeah. game with uh, less gunplay, more yeah. Batman Arkham Asylum style action. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, Professor Thor, he says, uh, dear Jeff and friends with a Final Fantasy VII remake coming out, it got me thinking about how people kept theorizing when the game was first released, there had be so, there had to be some kind of way to save Aerith. Uh, so my question to you is this, was there ever something in a game that you had to do or you knew would happen that you desperately tried to figure out a way to prevent or alter? I know that last year when playing a certain game that I won't name because of spoilers, I kept trying to think if there was a way to prevent the protagonist's fate. 
Uh, and currently I'm playing through Katana Zero, and it's starting to get really freaky and alarmingly dark with the story, and I'm currently pondering if I could prevent some of the more horrifying story turns from coming to pass if I had chosen different dialogue options. Thanks from Professor Thorgy. Uh, that's, I don't believe there's, I think there's only one ending to Katana Zero. There is only one ending to Katana Zero. And it's uh, a there is a, there is a There is a secret uh, fight in the game, though. Yes. That yes, is, yes, yes. is a very weird... Very weird fight. Something in a uh, game that you saw coming, but you tried desperately to stop it from happening. I reloaded Shadow of the Colossus so many times to try to keep Argo from falling over the edge of that cliff at the end. Yeah, I didn't want my horse I can't to think die. I ever, I'm the type of person that I'll play a game and I'll play it all the way through and then I'm pretty much done with it. Yeah, It's rare that I will try to like play a game to change something. Um, I mean, with, like you've never seen like a plot point coming in a game, and you're just been like, ah, fuck. Yeah, <laughs> it's kill like kill my dog. Yeah, I mean, I've had those <laughs> where I'm like, is there a way to do this? But then when it happens, I'm not like, all right, I gotta reload and try to figure out how to stop this. Like, I don't, I typically don't do that. Yeah, um, it's probably a testament to the fact that there's a that like these days, the story for most games is so on rails that yeah. like there's not a lot you can do to change a thing right yeah. even talking back to mass effect 3 it, i feel like i mean you know you can fuck up that entire game and you still get to choose one of the three three yeah. endings right yeah um you have to get to a certain readiness level to get to the ending but outside of that your choices don't really matter all that much yeah uh, i mean the, the only time your choices really matter in a game like say detroit become human or true uh, or the the until dawn or you know stuff like that oh i do know that at the end of fallout 3 you know before the dlc happened oh. you had to kill yourself yeah, uh, yeah even though you had you could be you could literally have that mutant with you that's like immune to radiation it's like nope you gotta go in the chamber you gotta go in the radiation chamber and get a radiate and it wasn't until the third dlc that they put in a like then you wake up later and they're like oh we almost lost you all right go do whatever you want to in the wasteland now <laughs> yeah uh, didn't like in the like the the cut the uh like the the ending thing when they updated it like if you had the mutant it called you a coward uh, for yes. not doing it yourself yes i believe so which uh, was like everyone was like you you shit not it was that your way of shitting on us for for w- not wanting to die and wanting to live and right. everyone live yeah and like, like fuck you and like my friend can do this and it isn't gonna kill him and it will kill me and so like yeah and he can come out afterwards and yeah like, he doesn't die yep boy the main story of fallout 3 is the worst part of fallout 3 yeah um i'm trying to think if there's anything else there's anything else where you're supposed to fail i swear there's probably been there's probably been a few scripted sequences in games that i didn't realize were scripted that where i was like Oh, if I had just done something differently, this wouldn't have yeah. happened. And then you go back and do it, and you're like, "Oh, you know what? Uh, I um, when I went through, I, I was almost about to do that when I was playing the Telltale Walking Dead games, and then I went online and I was like, "Hold on, how can I? How do I save this person?" It's like you can't; they're gonna die no matter what you do. And I was like, "Oh, well, this game sucks." Then I don't like it very much because it's like, don't. The thing that's always rubbed me the wrong way about Telltale games is like, quit giving me the illusion of choice if I really don't have any choice. Like, this shit's going to go down, and it's just like, well, we wanted to pretend like it was your fault. And it was like, it wasn't my fault. You did it. But the main issue just comes down to the idea that most games, you know, like, how would you save era? Like, I don't know if I played a game now, like, if halfway through uh rage Two. one of the important characters got killed off i don't think it would even occur to me that there would be a way to not get them killed off because yeah. if a character is important to the story and they die you can assume that that's been done for an emotional reason it's been scripted there's probably no way to save them i don't know it just i guess it doesn't really occur to me as a thing to try to do in video yeah. games yeah yeah all right, let's take one more question, and then we'll get out of here. Uh, let's see. Jesse writes in and says, hey there, uh, everybody. First of all, I want to say thanks to everyone at Rage Like Geek Bombast Junk Food Cinema. After hearing how uh, everyone of you created your own shows, uh, Rachie decided to do just do what could at the moment, what you could at the moment, and just put it out there on the internet. I became motivated to create my own podcast. Hey, congrats. I'll admit the name to avoid a shameless plug. Don't, plug away, man. Plug away. Uh, but... What we do is talk about everything in nerd and pop cultures, 
or in uh, nerds and, and pop culture, uh, but through the lens of disability. For example, my group of friends and I talked about the accessibility and battle royale genre and looked at Apex, Fortnite, and PUBG to see which game is uh, more accessible to people with disabilities. With that being said, I have two quick questions. First, do you have any tips when it comes to audio editing? Second, are you ever going to do another crossover with Junk Food Cinema or Geek Bombast? I loved it when you guys appear on each other's shows, and I'd love to see that again. Sincerely, Jesse. John, I'm have I ever all the time. have I ever been on Geek? I've never actually been on "quote unquote" Geek Bombast twice, right? twice, 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 twice. One was our our live show recording where I had a bunch of people on from like oh yeah, yeah Rogues Gallery, like Comics Rogues, Games, yeah, and yeah. Round Rock, Texas. Uh, and then there was another one that was I forget what what we talked about, but it was there was there was one. Was that one at your house? Yeah. Okay, I'm very late remembering that. Yeah, I think it was weird because when they I read this question and I was like. I don't know if I've ever been inside of your new apartment, and then it was like, well, John hasn't always lived in that no, new no, apartment. No, no, this was like OG <laughs> Geek Bombast, like not not the current uh, not doing anything Geek Bombast. Right. Uh, well, as far as... But as far as crossing over to Rage, like, I'm here all the time. Yeah, yeah. You could consider every... Uh, every other podcast is a Geek Bombast Rage like crossover. Um, as far as junk food cinema goes, I mean, you know... Uh, Dude, I'm going to tell you guys right now, like, it is a death knell when one of... Some of you know who podcast has a child that's like, they're gone. <laughs> they're out of it. Like, I don't know. I haven't seen Brian Salisbury in months. Um, and it He's a busy like, dude, though. He's very they busy. Got a, they got a screening of something coming up soon. Like Battle Beyond the Planets yeah, or something, something like, like that. that. Uh, which, you know, I don't know. I, I was actually considering going until I realized what day it was. So, this is your birthday? No, it's a d- day, same day as a wrestling show that we're going to. Uh, um, anyway, June 23rd, for those wondering. Do you have any tips when it comes to audio editing? Um, I am not the right person to ask for that. Uh, I think Amanda is actually the best person to give for tips for audio editing because she did it specifically mm-hmm. for a long time. Like me, I... um. I used GarageBand before they removed that capability from GarageBand. Yeah. Uh, for for uh, I you know for Apple, um, and uh, it did a lot of the the noise gating and and all that stuff like in the app kind of automatically. Mm-hmm. Um, so I never really like learned. But then they removed that function from GarageBand. Like I still have a garage band that it keep every time I open it, it asks me if I want to upgrade and I'm like no don't update <laughs> uh, but then again I don't use garage band anymore I use uh, Sony Vegas uh, right. and uh that's been a learning curve for me I've got some I got I'll give you some tips I've got well this is an audio I mean a- audio editing in particular okay so uh, one of the things that I learned early on, because, you know, uh, John talking about the mason jar with a microphone in it, yeah. when Jason and I first started doing yeah. uh, Spill uh, the Loading Bar, uh, we had one rock band microphone on a stand between the two of us that yeah. we would both lean in to speak into. Uh, so what I have learned as far as audio goes is, uh, one, I highly recommend going and buying a mixer that has compression built into it. Yeah. Uh, I have one from Yamaha that's like $75. And the thing is that compression, for those of you who don't know, uh, at least in this respect, automatically, like, okay, so when you're recording, if you get way too loud and the audio peaks out, what happens is the waveform actually flattens out. It just becomes this horrible (laughs) noise, right? Because... It can't. It literally cannot record how loud you are being. Compression at a certain noise threshold automatically brings that down. So even though it'll look like a just a wave, like a solid trapezoidal waveform, at the top of it, it still has the information. It's just it's keeping it from peaking all the way out. Yeah. Like I had tons of problems because the thing is that when you record audio, you want to record it as loud as you can. Because you can always make it quieter, right? But if you try to boost low audio, you're going to end up bringing in a bunch of like room tone and stuff like that. Yeah. You're going to have to try to get out. So you always want to try to record relatively loud, right? Like you want to kind of be as loud as you can, see where it peaks out, and then like adjust to just that. Uh, because one of the things that I found out when I was doing this is that broken audio is very difficult to fix. Very hard. Like I and I have a feeling that it's because the audio industry, like, they don't want you to be able to fix it. Like I can go into Adobe Photoshop and literally 
circle a person's head and hit shift F five to do a content aware fill and literally take things out with like like I, I made a um, this is just a quick side note, but I made a, 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 a thumbnail for the observation game that Amanda and I played last week, yeah. right? And in the thumbnail, it's a bunch of hexagons and it's a nice space background, and then like down in the corner there was just this space station, and I didn't want that space station there. So just whoop, put a lasso around it, shift F five, content aware fill, bam, it just like disappeared because Photoshop has become sophisticated enough over the years to try to like be like, well, what's around this? Let's just try to fill it in and yeah. make it, you know. I feel like there should totally be a way to to do some of that stuff with audio. I feel like there's not because audio engineers want to be able to charge you to sit behind the boards and move the things up and down. And it's better if a person is doing it, but some of us can't afford to hire people to do that. So compression is very important because it means you'll never deal with peaked out audio. Recording loud is important because you can always make things quieter, but it's harder to boost stuff up. Um Last but not least, my secret weapon for every single thing that I do, if it's recorded the right way, is a little piece of software that's free, and it's called Levelator, and it's great. And you take Levelator, and you dump your your audio file into it, and it chews through it, and when it's done, it just it it makes everything even volume, right? It uh, it tries to, anyway. It tries to, yeah. I don't know what, what the name of that is when you normalize the audio yeah. or whatever, but it basically tries to make everything relatively similar. Now this works. A lot better if you don't have a lot of background room noise or a lot of like yeah. stuff. Um, you know, I used to. W- if you don't have a lot of other noise outside of you talking, because that way, because if there is other noise, sometimes the the software can get confused and think that that other noise is what it needs to be focusing on. Yes, like I think, like for example, uh, there was a podcast uh, where it was it was done. It was two different people's audio. Uh, one audio was perfectly fine, quiet room, levelated it. Yeah. Worked fine. Uh, the other audio, it's the person had a fan on in the background. Mm-hmm. And when you tried to levelate it, it made the fan super loud yep. anytime that person stopped talking. Yep. So, like, you would hear, you wouldn't hear the fan when they're talking, but the second they stopped talking, suddenly you just hear this, yep. like, noise. And it, was, it took a minute to figure out where that was coming from mm-hmm. and to figure out how to fix it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you can you can gate. I mean, you could yeah. you could put a gate in there. A lot most audio software will have a thing where you can run through and and basically tell it like if the if the noise threshold gets down this amount, just like lower it entirely, which you have to worry about because sometimes it'll yeah. dip and stuff. But a lot of that stuff back in the old Garage Band days before they removed it, yeah, it did all that shit automatically. Yeah, which I fucking was spoiled by. Uh, and then they removed it from the app, which I will. Always, I think everyone hated. Mm-hmm. Uh, Apple for doing that, mm-hmm. and then when when people complain, they went, "Well, if you really want it that bad, go buy. It. We have a, we have a software for that. Here's the six hundred dollar piece of audio editing software that sure. can do that." Because they were literally tired of people using GarageBand, the free app that comes with with uh, Mac OS. Oh, to like uh, master their studio albums and stuff. To like master that. their podcasts <laughs> oh. and, and studio albums and all that stuff. Uh, so they wanted people to go buy like the the six hundred dollar sound editing software uh, instead of uh, using the free software that was fucking bomb for doing it. Uh, I can tell you, as somebody who deals a lot with video editing software, that it's kind of exactly the same across the board. Oh, no, it is. It is. It is. Uh, um, last thing I'll say, Jesse, is uh, microphones matter. Um, I have. They don't matter a huge amount. Yeah. But, like, the microphones that I have are sure beta 58 A's, and they're super, super, super hypercardioid, which means that if your lips aren't touching the mic, basically, the, it, you won't get picked up. Yeah. And that allows me to not have to soundproof this room or turn off my fan or turn down the TV, yeah. you know. I the reason say... that we used to turn subtitles on in the loading bar was because Jason and I could literally not turn the, the volume on the, the TV up because yeah. the... Microphones just picked up everything. Yeah. So, I mean, I will say that, you know, in regards to best best sound tips, editing tips, a lot of it is before you even start recording. Yes. Do you need the best microphones in the world? No. No. Do you need good microphones? It's beneficial. Yes. Uh, It's only going to make you sound better. But if all you have is is two Rockman USB mics 
as long as you if you have two people, as long as you have two mics, then I say go for it. If you only have the one, mm-hmm. maybe invest in it. Go to some place and find a used rock band mic, uh, an extra one. Um, but you can do you can do a lot with EQs. Yeah. You know, you can do a lot yeah. with EQs to boost um, stuff up. The other thing, and I think this is something that I know a lot of people don't want to do because they think it sounds weird. But I have I I stand by this and and. I don't do it here at Rage Select because I'm not allowed, but uh, have whoever's doing your sound wear headphones. Like mm-hmm. whoever's k- keeping an eye on the sound yeah. wear headphones so that, A, if someone does get too loud, like let's say you do have a, a soundboard, a mixing board. I do. If, if if someone does peak or get too loud, you can edit on, you know to edit to, to turn their to. 100% absolutely, yes. Um, on the fly. And a lot of people don't like to do it because when you're doing it, there's a a slight delay and and people have trouble talking and listening to themselves talk at the same time mm-hmm. and it's hard but if you do it long enough it suddenly is not an issue um it took me maybe like a week to get used to um and but i mean it's not required jeff you know uh you know not to, to call you out or anything you don't have headphones on when you're recording no and your audio sounds fine well, um, it's, it's, it's because I have a very specific yeah, setup and, yeah, for this, yeah, right? Because like, you 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 the, studied what the setup needs to be and who you're recording with and right. what it needs to be for those people, and you've stuck to it. And and I'm and that's why I'm saying it's not required. Yeah. But I personally feel like it does help if you have headphones on because then that that way even with yourself you know if maybe because sometimes uh luckily with the way Jeff has his mic set up and everything because again like you said earlier you have to be right on the mic. Right. Uh, for it to pick up anything. Mm-hmm. But sometimes you're in a situation where maybe the person can't be right on the mic, or maybe they are on the mic at the very beginning, and then slowly as they're talking, they're slowly not they're moving away. the mic and they're away from it and they can't right. hear them or anything. You know, and they because no one's listening, you may not know that, but for luckily the way Jeff has it set up, he knows it because they're moving away from the mic. Um, but well, no, that, that exact thing has happened to me on dojos, especially yeah. when the a person comes to record with me for the first time because yeah. we're both looking at the screen yeah. and they are turning their head towards me to talk and turning their face away from the microphone and I don't realize it until I go to save out the waveform and I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? And then I got to spend an hour dicking around with yeah. normalizing so, and level eight and doing all kinds of shit. And that's why I say it's usually a good idea especially when you're just starting out. Yeah. Now, once you actually know what you're doing, if you like if you're like you get to the point where you're like I don't need to listen to this. I know it's perfect. I know my audio levels are perfect for me recording. Um then yeah, you don't need the headphones. But I personally think that wear headphones so that you can hear yourself while you're, you and everyone else while you're talking, I think that is extremely beneficial. I know people don't like doing it because they don't feel comfortable listening to the hearing themselves talk like it throws them off right i know it there's it there's literally when i started doing it on geek bombast there's literally a probably about a a a two three four week period where i sound a little bit off in those episodes because i'm getting used to hearing my voice while i'm talking yeah but also it it also helps because you know i do help desk phone support for a living so you're already hearing yourself nine times out of ten the headphones that i'm wearing are also playing my diet. You know, I can hear myself talking while I'm talking. So irritating. That's so irritating. Yeah. I mean, and, 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 and on that note, if we were recording with not these microphones, yeah. like, I feel like if you have a condenser mic, you must put on some headphones to at least listen to it. At least at the very least, listen and record a little bit before you get started. Yeah. Um, if you're doing like a microphone with more than one person, right? Yeah. Here's what it all comes down to. It is incredibly difficult and sometimes impossible to fix broken audio. So do everything in your power to keep the audio from getting broken the first time, because I've been all up and down one side of the internet to the other and people's advice when you fuck up audio and you're like, how do I fix this? Their answer is record it over again because you can't fix it. Like there's yeah. nothing that you can do. And with that, we wrap it up. Rage Select Podcast. We talked a little bit about the Epic Games Store. We talked a little bit about some movie trailers. We talked a little bit about Rage 2. We answered some questions. I think it's a fairly successful podcast, John. I, I agree. Yeah. So, uh, Podcast 301, last podcast ever. Bye. See you next week. 